Miami head coach Butch Davis has had a proverbial monkey on his back for the past five years, and it has come in the form of Virginia Tech and head coach Frank Beamer and his band of Hokies. Although not slated to start today, Heisman candidate Michael Vick will surely play a part in today's game. With him sidelined, the burden falls on the Virginia Tech running game and the strong legs of sophomore back Lee Suggs. But the Canes have some plans of their own. A tenacious defense will be ready to swarm. It's all on the line today as the Canes take on the Hokies next here on Fox Sports Net. Sportsnet presents Miami Hurricanes football. It's all on the line today. A possible Big East championship, a possible shot at the national title as the third-ranked Miami Hurricanes take on number two, Virginia Tech. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Fort. I'll tell you what's happening. My partner, John Congemi, will tell you why. And, John, even more importantly for Miami, they are fifth in the BCS poll, and Virginia Tech is number two, so it's critical. And all the talk this week has centered around the health and well-being, or lack thereof, of Michael Vick, the All-American quarterback for Virginia Tech. I don't have any inside information. My personal feeling is I'd be shocked if he didn't play at some point in this ball game. I don't think he'll start, Frank, just because he's been hobbled all week, but I do believe he will play in this football game. You see, Michael Vick, now only after 18 regular season starts, he's six in total offense at Virginia Tech, eighth in passing, and he's accounted for over 35 touchdowns. So this guy's one of the most electrifying players in the Nash in a collegiate football league. This guy can make it happen by tucking it and running the football. Now on the other side, Dave Myers, the fifth-year senior, he's going to have to start for Virginia Tech. He was 10 of 19 for 152 yards this season. So it's a big drop-off at quarterback. And they call him Deep Ball Dave, and he's a fifth-year senior. He's married. He's a grad student, so I don't think intimidation will be a factor. Maybe talent will be. We'll see. Also on the injury front for Virginia Tech, and this affects their great special teams, Andre Davis, their standout wide receiver and punt returner, got three punt returns for touchdowns this year. He's questionable coming into the game. He's been banged up all season long, and now this guy leads the nation in average of punt returns with 22 yards every time he touches the football. He does a great job of getting into the end zone, three punt returns for touchdowns this year. So this is a guy not only catching the football, but returning it on special teams. If it, He'll be sorely missed if Virginia Tech loses him. He is a big play guy. On the other side of it, Miami special teams have done well this year. Santana Moss with an equal number of touchdowns on punt returns. He's got three. Well, Santana Moss knows how to get in the end zone on special teams as well. He's third in punt returns for an average with 20 yards. He has three punt returns this year for touchdowns. Now, Santana also broke a career mark, a Big East record, five total touchdowns on kick returns and punt returns. So this guy knows how to get into the offense, knows how to do it on special teams. I'd like to see Tan Santana used a little bit more on the offensive side today. Well, you all know if you're a Hurricane fan that Miami has lost five in a row to Virginia Tech, and a big reason for that is the opportunism of the Hokies' defense. Turnovers have played a big key in these last five games. Last two years, Miami's turned it over 11 times against the Hokies, and right now, Virginia Tech number one in the country in interceptions. Miami, by the way, is number four. Yeah, you mentioned 19 interceptions. The Hokie defense has been able to get in front of opposing quarterbacks, so they know how to turn the football over. Now, Miami's done a good job on the opposite side. They have 16 interceptions, and they, they also lead the country in non offensive touchdowns on offensive points in 63 so it should be a great battle on both sides of the ball especially on that undecided mark the special teams well I'll tell you what this is why players come to schools like this to play this is why we love to broadcast these games it's all on the line from the Orange Bowl Miami and Virginia Tech will have the opening kickoff on Fox Sports Net right after this Miami Hurricanes football on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you in part by Nextel, Nextel, how business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. By Office Depot, taking care of business. And by Mercedes. Visit your South Florida Mercedes-Benz Center today. You're looking at part of the crowd at the Orange Bowl on a very nice day for football. Partly sunny, 77 degrees, 59% humidity. Winds out of the northeast at about seven miles an hour. Virginia Tech will get the football to start this game. Won the toss and elected to receive. And we're expecting a capacity crowd, a sellout at the Orange Bowl, the second one this season. Of course, the Canes sold out against Florida State. Frank Fort, John Congemi with you on Fox Sportsnet. John, a little bit of the injury update from our opening. It appears Andre Davis will start at flanker, and Michael Vick has been cleared to play. 
although how much still remains a question. Well, you knew that was only a matter of time. He would be cleared to play, and I, I do believe they will go with the fifth-year senior, Dave Myers, to start the football game and see really how the tone of the game goes early. You see Butch Davis and his special teams trying to get together where they want to kick the football, how they want to cover it. Now, Frank, we've mentioned in the open, this special teams on both sides has been very, very big, and who wins these football games between Virginia Tech and Miami. Virginia Tech has blocked six kicks out of the last eight games against the University of Miami, so Butch Davis very concerned, especially with that third phase of his football team, his special teams. Look at Dave Meyer, the senior quarterback out of Ramsey, New Jersey, a 6'3", 201-pound senior. And as we mentioned, he is already in graduate school. He's 23 years old. He is married, and he has seen a lot of game action before, so it's not like he's coming into this game with the deer in the headlights look. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, the mad bomber, he likes to go down the football field with the ball, but I do believe they're a better football team all around when they have that big number seven in there because he can just tuck it and run. That's probably one dimension they will miss today with Dave Myers at quarterback, although you will get some pass timing in the offense. Here's a look at the BCS rankings. Oklahoma number one, Tech number two. To the consternation of many Miami fans, Florida State is three, Nebraska four, Miami five, and Florida six. Of course, strength of schedule is a big factor there, and that changes week to week depending on who you play and who that team has played up till that point in the season. Yeah, very confusing. You see Butch Davis in his sixth year at Miami, 46 and 20, and I think for Miami fans, Frank, the really only issue they have to worry about is today. They've already got over that big hurdle against Florida State earlier in the game, earlier in the season. If they win this game today, that will straighten itself out. Virginia Tech wearing the all-white. Miami in their traditional orange home jerseys with the white pants. Todd Sievers will kick it off for Miami. And Andre Kendrick stands back at the goal line, number four for Virginia Tech. A lot on the line today. A leg up on the Big East Championship, a leg up on a trip to the National Championship game, and we are underway from the Orange Bowl. This is Kendrick backing into the end zone, and with no momentum, he will take the touchback, and Virginia Tech will start on the 20-yard line. Michael Vick, helmet in hand. In fact, he has lost his helmet completely. He's left it on the bench, and Dave Meyer, indeed number 13, will come in to start the game at quarterback for Virginia Tech. John, important for Miami's defense, stop the running game today. Lee Suggs, 827 yards, averages 5.6 to carry. The sophomore tailback is the guy they're going to have to control. Yeah, and there's Myers numbers on the season, only 19 attempts, 10 completions for 152 yards. First and 10 for the Hokies from the 20. Ferguson, the fullback. Suggs, the fake to Suggs. Bubble screen to Emma Johnson with a good block. There goes Johnson, and he gets by Howard Clark. Edward Reed finally has to make the tackle up at the 48-yard line, a pickup of 28 on the first play of the game. Well, smart call by Virginia Tech. They want to get a completion to Dave Myers, although he is a fifth-year senior. You want to get the game started on a positive note. None better than to call a screen, just a fake play action to one side, a bubble screen. They love this play to the outside, especially to Emmett Johnson because he has breakaway speed. You see he breaks a tackle there. Number 20, Edward Reed finally coming up at the play, but a big cushion by Mike Rump. But the big key was they got the big white jerseys, the linemen out in front, Steve DiMiase, the center, big number 61, out in front to lead the way. Mike Rump playing way off on that first play. This is Suggs with his first carry. Spins into Miami territory. Damian Lewis and Al Blades combined to make the tackle after a gain of about three and a half. Here's Suggs' numbers on the season, and you see the big average per carry and 17 touchdowns, which is only two off the Big East record. So he is productive. Second down and about six. Look at Suggs, the sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia. Very fertile recruiting area, that Tidewater area, over the last six or seven years. Ferguson and Suggs in the eye. Meyer will throw it for the first time. Under some pressure, scrambles, and he'll go down. William Joseph tackled him just about at the line of scrimmage, a loss of perhaps a half a yard. It'll bring up third and seven for the Hokies. A look at the Hokie offense. Suggs and Ferguson, the running backs, along with Meyer, the quarterback. Emmett Johnson, their best receiver in terms of catches with 25 coming into the game. And the offensive line, a good group, Lambeau, Laird, Demasi, Redding, and Cadella. Third and seven upcoming for Virginia Tech. They send Davis and Wilford, double wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Out of the shotgun, Meyer. 
with some time over the middle, too high, intended for Browning win the tight end, and Virginia Tech will be forced to punt. A nice play on defense on second down by that man right there, William Joseph. He gets to the quarterback, and then a play after. Good pressure by the front four. No one open in the secondary. Nice presence by Leonard Myers on the corner. There you see Edward Reed making really what was a big tackle on the first play of the game to stop Emma Johnson on the bubble screen. Peasley in the punt, Robert Peasley. Freshman from Pulaski, Virginia. Santana Moss stands at the Miami 10. A left footer shanked it. And Miami will get great field position. They'll mark it at the 41-yard line of the Hurricanes. So an eight-yard punt by Robert Peasley. Well, Frank, we mentioned spe special teams would be a big concern on both sides of the football. That time right there, a bad kick, and Butch Davis's offense will get excellent field position, probably around the Miami 37-yard line. A look at Ken Dorsey, the sophomore quarterback from Orinda, California. His numbers on the season, a 58% completion rate, 1,675 yards. The touchdown to interception ratio is very good, although it was three interceptions to one touchdown last week. When they adjust the marking on that punt, it'll be a 12-yard punt marked out at the Miami 37-yard line instead of the 41. But either way you cut it, 8 or 12, it's not much of a punt, and Miami has good field position to start. There you see the young qu quarterback, the sophomore, Ken Dorsey, going into the second, really the third big game of this season. He had Washington early on the road, didn't fare well in the first half, but came back and played very well in the second half. Then he was spectacular against Florida State with that last-minute drive to, for the win. And today against a tough Hokie defense, I think he'll have success a lot today through the air just by his timing in the pass offense and the continuity he has, the relationship he has with the wide receiving core. Well, Miami will have to pass protect against this blitzing Hokey defense, and here's how the Canes will line up offensively. Najee Davenport will get the start at fullback. D.J. Williams not sure about his availability today. He did practice this week with a partially separated shoulder. Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne, the wide receivers. Ivan Mercer will start at tight end. And that Miami front wall, who did so well in the Florida State game, Bryant McKinney, the big left tackle, a midseason All-American, joined by LaFair, Romberg, Bibla, and Gonzalez. Brett Romberg fractured a right pinky finger last week, but he is in there to start the football game. We'll see if that affects the center quarterback exchange. Well, Dorsey, the last two weeks, has not been as sharp as we've seen him. Against Temple, he was okay. Threw one interception, and actually it was a good play by Terrence Left, which is the Temple cornerback, his first pick of the year. But last week against Louisiana Tech really looked confused at times. And Butch Davis said, I'm not going to absolve him of all the blame, but there were a couple of plays, particularly the two interceptions by the defensive end last week, where according to the Miami coaches, that player for Louisiana Tech simply got too tired to rush the passer and just sort of stood there in his original position, and Dorsey threw it right at him, unfortunately. Yeah, he was in the throwing lane a couple times, and I think that caught number 11 by surprise. But you will have games like that, Frank. You're not going to play at a high level every game out. Your goal is to do that. But when you're playing sometimes a Louisiana Tech or a Temple, sometimes you get a little lethargic in, in your habits and what you do on the field. That shouldn't happen, but we're all human, and it does happen, especially to a young quarterback. But today he'll be facing a very, very stingy defense in Virginia Tech. They like to come at you in waves. They'll put pressure on the line of scrimmage. It'll be up to Miami and the wide receiving core to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. And Miami has been able to run the ball in Virginia Tech in the past couple of years, but fumbles have been the undermining factor. First and 10 from the Kane 37. James Jackson is the starting tailback, and it's Jackson on the delay give. Jackson will pick up only two. It'll bring up a second and eight. David Pugh, the junior defensive tackle, along with Roniel Whitaker, number two, the cornerback, combining on the tackle. Let's take a look at that Hokey defense. Not quite as good as last year's group, but they start only one senior. Cobb, Beasley, Pugh, and Adibi along the front four. The linebackers, Summers, Housewright, and Ben Taylor, whose availability was in question before this game. He had an ankle injury last week. And the secondary, including the true freshman Eric Green from Clewiston, Florida, he has four interceptions on the season. Second and eight, Jackson again. Across the 45 and gets up to about the, uh, the 40, plus to the 40, to the 3 yard line, where the Daniel Adibi, freshman from Hampton, Virginia, made the tackle. It'll bring up third and about four for the Hurricanes. You see Miami right away, two runs. You see Jackson's number, seven touchdowns, an average of 5.2 on 532 yards rushing. They come out and try to bloody your nose with the first two plays, coming right to the short side of the field, getting their linemen involved. We didn't talk about the running game much, but that will be important. That will lead to the success of Ken Dorsey. Third and a long four. Standard personnel for the Kings. Moss came in motion. Flip out to Jackson complete. He's got one man to beat. 
Jackson stretching for the first down, and I'm not sure if he got there. It looks to be a little bit short. Corey Bird, the rover back, number 16, made the tackle. And this may require a measurement. It'll definitely depend on the spot, but Jackson did a nice job of getting to the outside. You see Dorsey's eyes downfield immediately. He knows he's going because of the coverage out to the flat, uses his speed to get by Corey Bird, and stretches out to the outside. Actually, it was a good tackle by Bird hanging on to number 21, the senior running back, James Jackson. It'll depend on the spot, but I do believe, Frank, he was a, coming up a little short on the play. 11.54 left to go first quarter, a scoreless game at the Orange Bowl. Our Big East crew today headed by Dennis Hennigan, the referee. And they'll put the chain down, and it is a first down for the Hurricanes. By about half the length of the football. So Miami maintains possession on the completion of James Jackson. They'll have a first and 10 at their 47-yard line. Momentum, it's a, it's a trite phrase, John, but especially against a team like Virginia Tech, momentum can be so important because they tend to score in bunches. Special teams defense, all of a sudden you look at the East Carolina game this year, the West Virginia game this year, it's a tight game, or all of a sudden now it's down 17, down 21 against Virginia Tech because they score in bunches. First and 10 for the Hurricanes. Davenport sets back in the straight eye. Jackson with the football behind Davenport. Jackson in midfield and to the Tech 49-yard line. Picked up about three and a half. Corey Bird, number 16. David Pugh, number 71. Again, combining on the tackle for the Hokie defense. Well, that time, Ken Dorsey getting Miami in a better play than what was called in the huddle. The audibles. Davenport picks it up and was a nice block to the, to the far side of the field, the wide side. Number 21, James Jackson following his big fullback, Nigel Davenport. Second, and a long six for Miami. Have to reach just inside the Virginia Tech 43-yard line for a first down. Jackson again behind Davenport. Jackson gets down into Virginia Tech territory close to the first down marker at the 43-yard line. Ben Taylor, junior linebacker from Bel Air, Ohio, making the tackle. And this, again, may require a measurement. No, Dennis Hennigan says he's got enough for the first down. Well, Frank, there's no secret what Miami wants to do coming out. They want to win on the ground early. They want to wear this Virginia Tech team out. They try to put a lot of pressure, a lot of stunning on the offensive line, defensive line front. That time they get caught moving people around. David Pugh, 71, was up in the air. Miami's offensive line, that's like coming to dinner early. He just washes them down to the inside. And 21, James Jackson in for the first down. First and 10 Kings. Near the Virginia Tech 42-yard line. Dorsey will throw. Dorsey going down the middle. He's got loss in the 10-5. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Ken Dorsey going 2-6. And Miami jumps on top, six to nothing as Moss, a 42-yard catch to beat Eric Green. Well, that's what we talked about. That running will open up the big plays on first down just when you least expect it. Ken Dorsey throws a strike, and the biggest thing Ken Dorsey did was he waited for Santana Moss. That means his offensive line had plenty of protection to provide for Ken Dorsey to hang in that pocket, throw the rope down the middle of the field on the post. Santana Moss goes in for the score. Todd Sievers on to attempt the extra point. Out of Aaron Mosier's hole. Kick is up, and it is good. And with 10 minutes and 29 seconds left to go here in the first quarter, the Hurricanes have jumped on top of the Hokies as Ken Dorsey hooks up with Santana Moss. 2-6, 4-6, 7-0. Hurricanes will be right back from the Orange Bowl after this. 10-29 left to go first quarter. There is your touchdown maker, Santana Moss, on the 42-yard reception. From Ken Dorsey, let's take another look on the post route. And Frank, credit this offensive line. Watch Ken Dorsey after he play fakes. Watch him step up and just pause right there. He wants to let it go and he waits. He has time because the offensive line gives him such great protection. Then he throws a strike right to Santana Moss, who was cutting in on that post play. Great speed, great execution, 7-0 Hurricanes. Sievers kicks this one straight out of the end zone for the touchback. Virginia Tech will start first and 10 from their 20-yard line. The Miami scoring drive, by the way, six plays, 63 yards, consuming two minutes and 44 seconds. There you see the strike, 42-yard reception by Moss, and that gives quarterback Ken Dorsey 15 touchdowns on the year. Santana Moss only his second receiving touchdown on the year, but of course he's got two rushing and three by punt returns. First and 10 tech, come out in the standard personnel package, double wide receiver, eye in the backfield. Meyer is the quarterback. Gives to Suggs. 
Suggs picks his way through and picks up almost nine yards before Dan Morgan and Mike Rumpf combine on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Well, that's what Miami has to do, John, is win on first down. They didn't do it on that occasion. You don't want this team in second and two, second and one. Yeah, it makes it easy on Suggs in that offensive line. Lambeau and Lear to the life, left side along with DeMassey, the center, did a good job on Dan Morgan and crew that time on first down just as they did to open the game with the bubble screen. Second and one for the Hokies. Suggs again. We'll have the first down, but it will only pick up about a yard and a half. Swallowed up by William Joseph and Damian Lewis, but it is enough for the first down as he crossed the 30-yard line. Yeah, it looks like William Joseph, although it's early in this game, and you see Al Blades, number seven, on your screen right there. William Joseph, number 94, looks like he's possessed today. He's done a nice job holding his own on that offensive and defensive line right at the line of scrimmage, right over the ball. Take a look, he's double teamed, he splits the double team, still finds the ball carrier. Lee Suggs travels down that line of scrimmage. That's what good defensive linemen do. They hold their ground, but locate the football, find it in a hurry. Slot right formation for the Hokies. First and 10 from the 30, Meyer on the option, and he swallowed up. Jamal Green gets him for a four yard loss. Jamal Green, that's his second tackle for a loss on the season, but you see the speed, the team speed of Miami really confusing Dave Myers to the short side. He wants to pitch the football, but number 55 is on him so quick. That relationship with quarterback and pitch man wasn't very good. Myers did a smart thing, holds on to the football and takes the loss, but credit the team speed and the agility of Jamal Green on the corner, that defensive end to make it happen. Jamal Green, the sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey with the big play on first down, second and 14. Get to the fullback. That's Kendrick, and Kendrick taking Al Blades for a ride to the 34-yard line. So he picked up eight. It'll be third and about six. Yeah, Al Blades from the free safety spot coming up for the tackle. He has 44 total tackles on the air. Big tackle there after a nice run in between the tackles by Jared, Jared Ferguson. Jared Ferguson, number 27. Yeah, I call 27 Kendrick did a Ferguson. nice job of getting in between the tackles for Virginia Tech. That sets up a third and about six yards to go for this Hokie offense. Ferguson, 5'9", 217. So he's a bowling ball. Meyer will operate out of the shotgun. Meyer throwing and overthrows, incomplete at the 45-yard line. Intended for Emmett Johnson, Al Blades had the coverage for Miami, and Tech will be forced to punt once again. Yeah, Blades had great coverage over the top, but credit Phillip Buchanan, number 31. He did a great job underneath the route on Andre Davis to really confuse the, the fifth-year senior quarterback, Dave Myers. He throws it away, but that throwaway will give Miami good field position. Peasley standing at the 21 to kick it away for Tech. Santana Moss at the Miami 25. Bit of a high snap, Peasley gets it away. End over end kick. And it hits a Miami player, they better get on it. Edward Reed picks it up at the 30 yard line and Miami will start first and 10 there. Well, the ball hit one of the Miami blockers, it might have hit run for Reed and Edward Reed alertly had to pounce on it. Edward Reed coming to the sidelines and Butch Davis will talk to his two returners there trying to say, hey, get out of the way or get in the right spot because that could really hurt a team. Delvin Brown also in on the conversation with Butch Davis. You see him talking to his defensive backs. He's saying, listen, I know you can't hear, but when you got to locate the football and get away from it. We'll take a timeout with 7.54 left to go in the first quarter. Hurricane 7, Hokies nothing. Back at the Orange Bowl in a minute. Speed Pass from mobile. Now you can refuel inside the store too. It's another way mobile keeps you ahead. Hockey leagues. Parties. Figure skating.
7.54 left to go first quarter. Hurricanes lead the Hokies by a score of 7-0 here at the Orange Bowl. Live the excitement of college basketball as the Canes return to the hardwood after an appearance in the Sweet 16 last season. Season tickets start as low as $99. Call 1-800-GO-CANES for ticket information. Miami Hurricane basketball run with us. First and 10 Canes from their 28. Jackson and Davenport behind Dorsey. Jackson with the football. Squirts through to the 30 and 32 yard line. Jake Housewright, the middle linebacker, number 41 there on the tackle, as Jackson picked up four on first down. Well, Miami starts the second series of the football game offensively with the same play they started the first uh, play of the of the game. Jackson to the short side off a of motion from Santana Moss. They must want to grind the football to the short sides. I believe they can win the line of scrimmage battle after they get on Virginia Tech's defensive line, maybe tire them out in the first half by running the football very aggressively. See Miami receivers stacked to the top of the screen. Dorsey will throw. Looking for his tight end. Shockey makes the catch. Was he in bounds? Yes, he was at the 42 yard line. Phillip Summers and Ronyel Whitaker knocked him out of bounds, but it is a Miami first down. Nice job by Shockey catching the football. Great play. Catches it almost twice. Dorsey showing great patience, waiting on the receiver, uh, the tight end, Shockey, to go up and see a great concentration on the sideline by Jeremy Shockey. He has 10 catches coming into the game. He wanted to go short side, but he had enough protection to catch it twice on the Miami sideline. First and 10 Canes at their 42. 7-14 left to go first quarter. Shockey's 10th reception of the season. Dorsey on the counter play. Give to Jackson, and he is run down from behind by David Pugh. And that'll be a loss back to the 38-yard line, a loss of almost five. A little bit of a slow developing play on that counter, and Virginia Tech's defense is very quick. Miami's had a lot more success with the quick hitters. In second, and almost 14. First negative play for the Hurricanes today. They'll line up with the wide receivers in the slot to the top of the screen. Dorsey on the rollout. Chased by Housewright, and Dorsey got away from him. Ken looking to make a play and nearly had it picked off. Eric Green nearly made the interception. Daryl Jones, the intended receiver. And they say he's got it? They say he intercepted it? Or he caught it? But they're marking the ball down at the 48-yard line. Well, let's take another look at that. We're a long way away from that play, and now they're calling it incomplete. At first, the officials were marking it down like someone had caught the ball. It is an incomplete pass, and it will bring up third and about 14, and now timeout called by the Miami Hurricanes. With 6.18 left to go in the first quarter, Miami with a 7-0 lead. And indeed, Reggie Wayne did catch that ball on the hop, but it did touch the ground underneath the hands of Eric Green. I couldn't believe at first they were marking that down as a completion. The officials put the ball down about a yard shy of the first down, but they got the call right, Dennis Hedigan and his crew. First time out on the field with 6.18 left to go first quarter. The Hurricanes lead the Hokies 7 to nothing. Back at the Orange Bowl, 6.18 to go first quarter. Miami facing a third and 13 from their own 38. Dorsey out of the shotgun. Dorsey looking down the middle of the field. Now throws toward the hash mark and incomplete at the Hokie 45-yard line. Santana Moss, the intended receiver. Corey Bird had the coverage and... Miami will have to punt for the first time today. It looked like he was looking for Shockey down the middle, John. Exactly right, Frank. It looked like he wanted to get it to his big tight end, Jeremy Shockey, but he couldn't get past the linebacking core of Virginia Tech. Then he looked off to Santana Moss. Looked like Santana ran a hook route, and Kenny threw the dig. Freddie Capshaw in for his first punt. Ronyel Whitaker standing back at the Tech 15. Capshaw hangs it high. Nice kick. Whitaker signals fair catch, lets it bounce. Aaron Mosier turned his back and made the cardinal mistake when you're covering a punt. If he signals fair catch, you run past him. Get to the goal line as fast as you can, and usually Aaron Mosier's very good at doing that. That time he almost breaks down with the punt returner, took the bait, and the ball falls harmlessly into the end zone. Well, Aaron Mosier, a senior, should know better than that. 
When a guy signals fair catch, you run by him and get behind him. Well, you see right there on the sideline, Santana Moss and the quarterback, Ken Dorsey, conversing about that last play. They said, yeah, that was my fault. You were wide open, should have got the ball to you. I'll get it to you next time. I should make an addendum to that. When the punt is coming down in the red zone, you run by him to get to the goal line, as you said. First and 10 tech at their 20-yard line. And whistles will blow this play dead before it starts. 6.04 left to go first quarter. And they're going to reset the 25-second clock. Apparently it had not started. And the official on the far side of the field, the head linesman, Roger Please Martin. Please reset the 25-second clock. Bristol Martin, the head linesman, caught that and blew the play dead before it started. So Dennis Hennigan will reset play. First and 10 Hokies from their 20. Third time in a row they have started a possession at their 20-yard line. 6.04 left to go first quarter. Canes have the 7-0 lead. Cullen Hawkins now the fullback for Virginia Tech. And Kendrick is the tailback. Kendrick has the football into the arms of Al Blades. He stacks him up after a gain of about three. Frank, we've seen this on a number of occasions defensively. Al Blades coming up on first down and making a big tackle along with Dan Morgan. He crowds the line of scrimmage on first down from that free safety position. Does a nice job locating the running back and takes him to the ground. Second and a long seven coming up for the Hokies. We have yet to see Michael Vick today, if you're just tuning in. Dave Meyer started the game and has been in there on all three tech possessions. Derek Carter, number 85, now in a tight end for Virginia Tech. Meyer on the option, fakes the pitch, and Jamal Green's got him again for a loss, this time of nearly four yards. Really the same situation, Frank, coming back, and Dave Myers goes to try to run the option in the short side. He's not as adept at running the football as Michael Vick. You see there the relationship between quarterback and running back, not there. He's got to dish the football out and just let the chips fall where they may, but you see number four, Kendrick, the tailback way out in front of the pitch. The relationship looked good, but Jamal Green gets on the quarterback so fast, turns it into a loss and a big third down play, a third and 11 for this Hokie offense. Meyer will operate out of the shotgun. Four-man rush for the Canes. Meyer under some pressure, dumps it underneath, complete. Cullen Hawkins is fullback taken down at the 27-yard line. Howard Clark and Chris Campbell combining on the tackle for Miami. It was a gain of eight, but three yards shy of a first down. Yeah, Chris Campbell does a nice job from the linebacking spot. He's got great speed. The junior linebacker on the strong side. Come into the game with 45 total tackles. He's got great speed and compliments Morgan and Clark at that linebacker spot. Santana Moss back to receive the kick of Robert Peasley. Peasley left puts it away. This is best punt of the day. Santana Moss signals fair catch and makes it at the Miami 36-yard line. And the Canes will start first and 10 with four minutes and eight seconds left to go in the first quarter. Santana Moss, the recipient of a 42-yard touchdown pass on the Hurricanes' first possession. That has the Canes in front, 7-0, a 37-yard kick and no return by Robert Peasley of Virginia Tech. Frank, if you're Miami, especially the Miami coaching staff, you've got to believe this game is going exactly the way you've scripted. The offense coming out, trying to run the football, winning by big plays, getting great field position, and that hokey defense without Michael Vick not able to move the ball with any consistency. First and 10, Hurricanes. Najee Davenport, the fullback. James Jackson, the tailback, behind Ken Dorsey. Canes in their standard personnel package. Robert Williams, number 80, is the tight end. Dorsey will throw on first down. Going deep for Reggie Wayne. He makes the catch at the 25-yard line and will be down at the 23. Eric Green had the coverage, but the big play from Dorsey to Wayne. Great situation for Ken Dorsey to check out of man-to-man -man coverage. You got to take your shots when they occur on the football field. He's not afraid to audible out of a play and hit his big play receiver, Reggie Wayne. What a great catch. He just goes back five steps, throws it to the inside because Reggie Wayne got by the cornerback, Eric Green, to the inside. But a great fingertip catch by Reggie Wayne. He came into the game with 30 receptions. Watch this catch in concentration. Just a nice pass by Ken Dorsey. Put enough touch on the football, and you see the excitement out of Reggie Wayne. 41 yards on the reception for Reggie Wayne. He and Moss are stacked to the bottom part of the screen. Give to Jackson, breaking through. Jackson gets down to close to the 17-yard line. Kevin McAdam, the backup safety from Lakeside, California, junior college transfer, making the tackle, but Jackson got almost six on first down. Boy, this Hurricane team on both sides of the ball really showing a lot of confidence today. Coming out trying to run the football between the tackles. Nice, hard, and aggressive run by James Jackson on that play. 
Three minutes and 16 seconds left to go with the clock moving here in the first quarter. Hurricanes trying to add to a 7-0 lead. Canes now go with double tight end. Andre King, the only wide receiver in the formation. Pitch to Jackson. He's going to try and throw the ball. He's got Shockey, but now he comes back the other way, and he has some room. Dorsey with a shade block and a great block downfield from King allows Jackson to score from 17 yards out, and the Hurricanes are up 13 to nothing. Well, one way or another, that was going to be a misdirection or a trick play, and James Jackson did the smart thing. It looked like the tight end was way to the inside. He never got off the football, and James Jackson does what he does best, runs in the open field. Nobody's going to catch him, and you called it, Frank, a great downfield block by Andre King at the goal line, number 84, the senior wideout, springs Jackson into the end zone, and the Hurricanes lead 13 to nothing. Seavers on for the conversion try. Mosier's hold. Seavers puts it up and through. And with 2.53 left to go first quarter, Miami has jumped on Virginia Tech 14 to nothing. Take a look. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but Andre King, Dorsey just kind of shades his guy here, but it's King downfield who puts his man on the ground. Now, all Dorsey has to do is get in the way, and that's exactly what he did right there. But right there, that's the block right about the two-yard line by Andre King. You saw a jersey on top of another, but watch the tight end. He never gets out. He gets washed inside. You see him falling down right about the hash mark. James Jackson does the nice thing. He couldn't find Shockey downfield. Dorsey gets in the way of a hokey defender, and then the big block at the goal line by Andre King springs James Jackson into the end zone. James Jackson with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year from 18 yards out. Miami leads it 14-0. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Hurricanes lead it 14-0 with 2.53 left to go in the first quarter. It's the breakthrough news program that has everyone talking. For all the latest news on your favorite national teams, get your complete coverage on the National Sports Report Monday through Saturday at 10 and midnight only on Fox Sportsnet. Kendrick will run it out from the end zone. Kendrick will not get to the 15-yard line. Daryl McClover, number 49, making the tackle and flags coming in late at about the 18-yard line of Virginia Tech. Well, let's check out the penalties, and we'll see who's coming in at quarterback for Virginia Tech. Michael Vick was warming up. He's got his helmet on. The penalty will go against Virginia Tech, and it looks like Michael Vick, John, will be coming into the ball game. Yeah, there's no doubt who's coming into this football game, but Michael Vick's going to inherit some terrible field position, probably inside the 10-yard line when he trots onto the football field. They'll mark it off half the distance as Kendrick only got back to the 12-yard line, and here comes Michael Vick. The Miami scoring drive, by the way, three plays, 64 yards, a minute and 15 seconds. Ken Dorsey today is four of six for 97 yards and a touchdown. And Michael Vick, the Heisman candidate, will take over with the Hokies at their six-yard line. There you see his numbers, 584 rushing yards and eight touchdowns and 15 touchdowns in total. You see over 1,000 yards throwing the football, but he'll come into a game with a 14-point deficit in a tough spot to open up the game on that closed end of the Orange Bowl Stadium. Here's Vic. Gives it off to Suggs, and Suggs across the 10-yard line to the 11 and 12. Dan Morgan in on the tackle for Miami, along with Al Blades. Frank, the thing you get with Michael Vick being in this football game, you don't only, not only get his ability, but I think that raises the level of confidence of the 10 players around him in this huddle. Just right there on, on Suggs' run, what an aggressive run on first down. You haven't seen him run the football like that, and I think that offensive line will carry it out. Now it's up to Dan Morgan and his 10 other players on defense to stop number seven. Second and four for the Hokies. They'll go double tight end again. Vick, three-step drop. Throws it out complete to Wilford, and Mike Rump makes the tackle at the 21-yard line. That is enough for a first down for the Hokies, a gain of nine. Nice play on the outside. Good throw for his first pass attempt on the afternoon by Michael Vick. Just a three-step drop, very gingerly going back, setting and firing it outside. A nice catch, nice throw behind there, and a good adjustment to the football by Wilford, number 19. Two minutes left to go first quarter. Hurricanes with a 14-0 lead. But it's almost palpable. The, the tenseness when Michael Vick has entered this ball game, John. First and 10, Hokies at the 21. Now back to their standard personnel with the two wide receivers. Vick gives to Suggs. Suggs picks his way through, and Chris Campbell forced to make the tackle up at the 32-yard line, but it's a pickup of 10-plus and a first down. Give him 11 for Lee Suggs. What I was trying to say a couple minutes ago was you haven't seen these back-to-back -back runs by Virginia Tech. Vic gives the rest of this team confidence, and they're hitting the holes, and they're getting people on body. You see great blocks up front 
by the offensive line and then Suggs does what he does best he runs the football he's not a real big back but a very productive back he's averaging over he's averaging 5.6 yards every time he runs the football and as we said he's got a 17 touchdowns on the season he has a long of 56 so he's liable to break it at any time first and 10 Hokies at their 32 Vic with the play fake and the pass is deflected and incomplete Cornelius Green, number 98, appeared to get a hand on the football. When he's lucky, he did. Cornelius Green with a big play in the backfield of the Hokies because they had some big offensive linemen out again on that wide receiver screen to the short side. Take a look. It'll come right at you. Big number 98 sticks his right hand up and just deflects the pass. Great timing by Cornelius Green. He has two breakups on the year. Make it three now. But watch out in front. All oh, you had two, three white jerseys on two orange jerseys. Miami out, mutter, out, out manned to the short side of the field. And Miami had a lot of problems last week against, Virginia, uh, against Louisiana Tech with that wide receiver screen play. Second and ten. Give us the Suggs. Tripped up right in the hole. Beautiful tackle by Matt Walters. Held it to no gain. Matt Walters doing a nice job up front for Miami. Yes, we can. And yes, Matt Walters can get into that hokey backfield. Tackle for a loss. That's his fourth tackle for a loss on the year. You see there right down to Melbourne, Florida. The sophomore goes at 6'5". Did a nice job at the point of attack. Getting his shoulder pads below the center, Damasi, you see right there, fighting off big number 61, and then he knifes in for the tackle. Officially a loss of one. It's third and 11 for the Hokies. They send the receivers in a slot left. Vic out of the shotgun for the first time. Four-man rush for the Canes. Vic with time, down the middle, off the receiver's hands and nearly intercepted. Was going for Emmett Johnson, and then both Blades and Reed nearly had a shot at the pick. Well, Emmett Johnson's got to catch that ball if you're a Hokie fan. That was an excellent pass by Michael Vick. He hung in the pocket as long as he could, threw a strike down the middle, but almost a chance for Al Blades to come up with a big play off the deflection, but watch Vick in the pocket. He has plenty of time, great pass protection up front. Then he throws a strike down the middle over the linebacker, 45 Howard Clark, and almost into the arms of Al Blades. But you got to come up with that if you're a Hokie fan. Beasley's kick, end over end, fair catch signaled and made by Edward Reed, the short man, as Miami has the wind at their back in this first quarter. So they sent Reed back there up short of Santana Moss, and that saved Miami probably 15, 20 yards of field position, only a 19-yard kick, and the Canes will have it first and 10 at midfield. That's good coaching by Butch Davis. You notice on the last punt return, he brought his punt return back, especially Edward Reed and Brown, number 24, telling him, hey, either fair catch it or get out of the way. That time, Edward Reed makes the smart play, fair catches it, immediate field position right around midfield. 17 seconds left to go here in this first quarter. Miami leading 14-0. DJ Williams now in at fullback. Jackson dragged down for a loss by Chad Beasley back at the Miami 45-yard line. It's a loss of almost five, and that will end the first quarter. We are under 10 seconds and counting. So the Miami Hurricanes taking advantage of a couple of big plays, a 42-yard touchdown to Santana Moss from Ken Dorsey, and a 17-yard run by James Jackson. There was a penalty flag thrown on that last play. Let's see what it is. It's a dead ball personal foul on Miami. So that will push the Canes back even further and make it about a second and 25 as the clock stopped with five seconds left in this first quarter. Frank, that's the one thing Miami doesn't want to get into is bad, bad plays that'll cause you penalties. And Butch Davis is asking, what did we do on offense? He's getting the explanation from the field judge. But Miami putting themselves, after getting the ball right around the 50-yard line, and even after Chad Beasley makes the tackle behind the line of scrimmage, Miami now will snap the football on their own 30. Second and 30 for the Canes. They have to reach the Virginia Tech 40-yard line. Four seconds left to go in the first quarter. And the clock runs out as they had restarted the clock after the penalty was marked off. So we have reached the end of the first quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Butch Davis and the Miami Hurricanes with a 14-0 lead over Virginia Tech. We'll be back with the second quarter here on Fox Sportsnet right after this. It's the Breakthrough Sports News Program that has everyone talking. For all the latest news on your favorite national teams, get your complete coverage on the National Sports Report, Monday through Saturday at 10 p.m. and midnight. A full hour of latest scores, highlights, exclusive interviews, and more. The National Sports Report tonight after the game, and again at midnight only on Fox Sports Net. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Fox Sports Net as we begin the second quarter of play here at the Orange Bowl. Miami with a very good first quarter, a 14-0 lead. 
behind Ken Dorsey and some very good work from his offensive line. But the Canes, as we start quarter number two, will have a second and 30 at their 30-yard line. A running play to Jackson, lost five, and then a personal foul dead ball on Miami. So that puts the, their backs against the wall in terms of down and distance. That's not the way you want to start the second, the second quarter with a, a bad penalty right before the quarter ends. Now you've got a bad situation on second down, second and 30 yards to go, and the win coming against you. Miami with three wide receivers in the game. Andre King joining Reggie Wayne and Santana Moss. Clinton Portis the only running back and Portis has the football on the counter play. Portis gets through to the 35 yard line before he stacked up. He gained five. Channing Reed number 53 backup defensive tackle from Trenton New Jersey makes the tackle. And it's third and 25 for the Hurricanes. Well last week Clinton Portis was a surprise insertion into the football game. There you see statistic averaging almost 10 yards every time he touches the football on 35 attempts and I really like to see this this young man come into the game the sophomore running back he does a nice job coming in a change of pace from James Jackson he's very explosive can break it at any time but he's a very tough runner he knows how to run in between the tackles third and 25 for Dorsey and the Canes fake to Portis Dorsey stepping up fires incomplete to DJ Williams and Corey Bart leveled him after DJ could not make the catch on the high throw. Well, that's one pass I know Ken Dorsey doesn't want to throw again today because one, DJ Williams goes up to catch the football. He's already hurting, but that's a bad pass going diagonal across the field really to gain a minimal, a, a big yard of maybe one or two yards. You're not going to get a big play throwing the football across the field like this. The only thing that can happen is something bad like Corey Berg maybe stepping in front and taking it the distance. So uh, that one you'd want to have back. Capshaw's punt against the wind. Whitaker with a chance to return. Whitaker gets away from the first wave. Whitaker at the 45. And he's still going. Finally run out in Miami territory. Just inside midfield. So Raniel Whitaker with a nice job on the return. And Michael Vick will have ex excellent field position for the Hokies. Well, the cornerback slash punt returner, Raniel Whitaker, does a nice job tiptoeing along the Hokie sideline. Now the Hokies, for the first time offensively, will have great field position. 13.59 left to go second quarter. Miami leads it 14-0. A beautiful South Florida day, and the Hurricanes are making it even better for their fans with a 14-0 lead. A minute and one second into the second quarter over the Hokies of Virginia Tech. But excellent field position after a 23-yard punt return from Raniel Whitaker, and Michael Vick sets up the Hokies first and 10 just inside Miami territory. On the option, Vick. Keeps the ball, and down he goes as Al Blades right there, and it's a loss of about a half a yard. Well, that's one thing Michael Vick will be very limited in doing this afternoon is running the football and actually being able to cut and make breaks that he's normally used to making, and especially with this Miami speed on the corner, you see big number 55 this time playing the option, waiting for Al Blades, number seven, to come on the inside, and Al Blades did a nice job of forcing Michael Vick's hand that time. You see him going to the ground, but most of the time he's been very productive getting eight touchdowns on the ground, averaging six yards every time he does decide to tuck it and run. Second and 11 for the Hokies at midfield. Vick out of the shotgun. Kendrick and Hawkins around him. Four-man rush for the Canes. Vick under some pressure. And down he goes for the sack. Jamal Green, along with Quincy Hicks, combining for the sack. Well, Frank, it's very evident Michael Vick's not going to be able to break out and get out of the, the fray in that offensive backfield. He's very ginger walk, or walking around the backfield. You see him tiptoeing around there, trying to bounce around, but he has no push off that right leg. You even see him keeping it off the ground so he doesn't have to put any more weight than he needs to on that leg. And he's uh, really like a sitting duck. Breaks down in timing. Michael Vick's not going to be able to make something happen on his own. And a delay of game penalty after, as you look at Michael Vick's brace on the right ankle, the boot. It was a the dead ball delay of game on Virginia Tech. Third down. Oh, I'm sorry, they're not going to count the play. They, they never got the play off, so take away the sack. It's now second, third and 16 on the scoreboard, but they have second down on the yardage marker. That's Kendrick on the delay. Jamal Green's got him, and he goes down right at the line of scrimmage. Jamal Green playing some inspired football for the Miami Hurricanes. Well, we've called Jamal Green's number and name, number 55, 
at least five or six times already early in this football game and he's been all over the defensive end position for Miami you see there number four Kendrick taking the underneath handoff out of the shotgun but 55 will not be denied he's got great speed and great presence as a sophomore did a nice job on that play well the scoreboard was wrong the field marker was right it was a second down play this is now third and 17. Miami in a zone blitz. Vic stepping up, chase from behind, and Jamal Green gets him at the 48-yard line. It won't go down as a sack because Vic did gain four or five yards, but it will bring up a punting situation. Now, Frank, Jamal Green came into this game with 12 total tackles. He may match that today. Does a nice job going from the outside, the right side of your screen, beating number 57 on the outside, Anthony Davis, and then Vic still has enough speed, but not enough to get away from Jamal Green. Does a great job of just hanging on. You see Davis, 57, trying to take him outside, but Green goes back to where Vic is. He was helped also by number 92, Damian Lewis. Here's Peasley's punt with the wind at his back. Santana Moss at the 19. Santana looking for his blockers. Cuts it up at the 25 and gets to the 29-yard line. And Miami will start there first and 10. Number 48, Mike Donahue, a backup flanker, making the tackle on special teams for Virginia Tech. A 33-yard punt and an 11-yard return for Santana Moss. There's 11 minutes, 22 seconds left to go second quarter. Santana Moss and the Hurricanes lead the Hokies 14 to nothing right back at the Orange Bowl after this. 14 nothing Miami with 11:22 left to go second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. The broadcast rights to this telecast have been granted to Foxnet Sportsnet Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Fox Sportsnet Florida is strictly prohibited. That is Big Zoe, Alonzo Warning. The Miami Heat Center out this year with the kidney ailment, taking in some college football action. He went to Georgetown. What do I know about college football? I know. I know they have a team, but... I wasn't sure of that. First and 10 Canes. Portis will squeeze out about three yards before he stood up. Jake Housewright, number 41, the middle linebacker, in on the tackle for Virginia Tech. Helped out by Lamar Cobb, number 28, a sophomore out of Hurt, Virginia. It's a great name for a defensive player. Yeah, Hurt. From. Where are you from? I'm from Hurt, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hurt you. I deliver Hurt. <laughs> Second and seven for the Hurricanes. D.J. Williams and Clinton Portis in the eye behind Dorsey. Blitz coming on Dorsey. Steps up in the pocket, throws low. Ivan Mercer caught it, no, bounced it. Caught it on the short hop, right at the first down marker. Phillip Summers had the coverage. This is a big series for Miami. They had the ball last series, starting on the 50-yard line. They get that penalty, a dead ball penalty, get the ball back to the thrown 30, and then they don't move the chains. Virginia Tech gets some good field position. They don't do anything. So right now, really at a tug and pull in, in this football game with 10.38 left to go before halftime. Miami can move the chains here. You see the average field position, Miami at their own 36, and Virginia Tech back by their own 20 at the 23. So a big opportunity, Miami, right here to move the chains on third down. Third and seven, three wide receiver formation for the Canes. Four-man rush for Tech. Dorsey with time, delivers complete to Moss up at the 47-yard line, and he'll go down at that point, tackled by Phillip Summers, the outside linebacker from Cluiston, a senior, but it is a Miami first down at the 47. Again, credit Miami's offensive line, excellent protection, and that time the Virginia Tech Hokie defense, they didn't bring a lot of pressure, they only brought three pass, or actually four guys up front, but great job by Martin Bibler. Didn't let his man even get off the line of scrimmage, and nice timing by Ken Dorsey to find Number six, Santana Moss on the curl route. Last time they didn't hook up on the curl route. This time he hangs in the pocket, delivers a strike versus zone coverage. First and 10 from the Kane 47, and Joaquin Gonzalez moved early. That'll cost Miami five yards. We'll move it back to the 42-yard line. It'll be first and 15. By the way, Miami long snapper Chris Harvey has been taken to the Fire locker room to, to receive snap. stitches in his Ball chin. He was cut on the uh, last punt return by Virginia Tech. So. Miami would like to get a few first downs here and not have to use a backup snapper on the punt game against this Virginia Tech team. And we talked about it at the open, how important special teams are to both teams. You don't want to lose anybody, especially as valuable as your long snapper. 
The backup snapper is Joe Fanagrassi, number 68 for the Hurricanes. Right now it is first down for the Canes, but first and 15 after the false start. That's Daryl Jones in motion. Dorsey looking to throw. He has Andre King at midfield, and Andre puts his head down and gets to the Tech 46-yard line. Jake Housewright, number 41, Corey Bird, number 16, combining on the tackle. It's a gain of almost 13 yards. It'll bring up third and short for the Canes, third and about two. Nice scheme that time by Larry Coker. Almost a flood to the, to the wide side of the football field. He had one go guy going deep, guy going short, and then Andre King coming back inside and then back to the outside. You see him right there, great cushion. He left two defenders on the inside, and then the torpedo goes for the first down, just coming up about three yards short. It'll bring up a second down and thir three to go. I beg your pardon, it is second down, not third. And on the second down play, Clinton Cordes has the football, trying to pick his way through. Ben Taylor stood him up at the 45-yard line. He'll still be about a yard shy of a first down. Ben Taylor, number 40, very active on the Virginia Tech defense. A 6'2", 226-pound junior from Bel Air, Ohio, 77 tackles five of those for loss and he was questionable coming into this game with an ankle injury yeah this team this hokey defense especially the defensive side a little bit more injuries than the coaches and the medical staff have led on to believe but as you said ben taylor leads the team in tackles with 77 comes in a little banged up but a nice play on second down third and one canes they go double tight end reggie wayne in motion dorsey will throw for it pass to dj williams behind him and dj couldn't come up with a one-hand catch Taylor had the coverage. DJ was open, but ball a little bit behind him. Well, that time they tried to run the same play they hit Andre King on, the little uh, in and out by the inside three receiver. That time there was no timing on the pass play that time. And Ken Dorsey tried to fit it into DJ Williams. No one open on the play. You have to give credit to the Hokie defense. They did a good, did a good job putting a man on every wide receiver. Chris Harvey is in to snap, so he has returned to the ball game with the cut chin. Freddie Capshaw will try to hang it up into the win Whitaker will let it bounce and it'll take a bounce Virginia Tech's way and back toward the 20 yard line they'll mark it right at the 20 so the Hokies will start there first and 10 a 24 yard punt by Freddie Capshaw and that wind appears to be pretty strong down on the field John going from our right to our left there's time out on the field with 8 12 left to go second quarter the Hurricanes lead the Hokies 14 to nothing Back, back. That's good. Watch the truck there. Thanks to its 32 valve I Force V8 and single piece frame rails with nine cross members, the Toyota Tundra can carry up to 2,000 pounds of whatever. Okay, she's loaded. Good. Now well, let's go back and build me some girlfriends. The Toyota Tundra. Better from the ground up. Step on it, Bob. Just because you're single doesn't mean I have to be. I told you this would work. Good call, Dave. Excellent venue. Who thinks getting married anywhere? Guys, someone's coming. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Are you here with the bride or the groom? The groom. Bride. bride. <laughs> nice to meet you. Guys, I think they're on to us. <laughs> hey, I think they're on to us. Having one on the house? Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. You think they're on to us? <laughs> 8-12 left to go second quarter. Miami 14, Virginia Tech nothing. Keep the drive alive. Join the University of Miami Hurricanes as they take on conference rival Pittsburgh Panthers on November 11th at noon in the Orange Bowl. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANES. Right now, the immediate task for the Hurricanes is to try and beat this Virginia Tech ball club and Michael Vick, right now a 14-0 lead. And Vic clearly seems to be affected by the ankle injury, John, but he is still very, very dangerous. He's always dangerous because of the experience he has, and he's only a sophomore, but in the 18 games that he started as a collegiate quarterback, he's already accounted for 35 touchdowns, so he makes big plays. Normally, he makes them with his legs. Now he's limited to maybe making them with his head and his left arm. Sixth Virginia Tech possession. Five of them have started at their 20 or inside. On first down, Suggs with the football, and Suggs breaks free at the 30. Al Blades trying to run him down. Philip Buchanan finally pushes him out in Miami territory at the 41-yard line, but a 39-yard gain for Lee Suggs. Well, Suggs is capable of breaking a big one. He has a long of 56 on the season. His average is just over five yards, but this time just off the right tackle, 
No one touches him in an orange jersey. You see right there, Edward Reed was the only guy in position to make the play, and then Blades trying to take a better angle, hoping for help. He gets it in number 31, Philip Buchanan, but a huge hole on the right side of that line. Nice job up front by the Hokie offensive line. They spring struggles for a big gain in a first down. First and 10 from the Miami 41. Vic gives it to Suggs. Cuts back the other way and gets down to the 35-yard line. Picked up about six. Dan Morgan there for the Canes, along with Howard Clark, number 45. And let's talk a little bit about Dan Morgan, who has a turf toe. And, John, you, you don't see teams generally run up the middle against Miami like they did on the previous play. Usually Morgan is there to fill the gap, but he's probably not moving around at 100%. Yeah, you're right. A little banged up last week against Virginia or against Louisiana Tech. There you see Dan Morgan, the senior. He's up for every award possible in his senior year. He's done a great job this season, but he is hampered by that big toe injury. On second and four, the fullback, Ferguson, gets close to the first down and should have it at the Miami 30-yard line. Morgan and Jamal Green combining on the tackle for Miami, along with Al Blades, number seven. But Jarrett Ferguson picked up five and a first down. Well, right now, Frank, you have to be concerned if you're Miami's defensive staff at the aggressiveness of this Virginia Tech running game. They're coming up in between the tackles and running it with authority. They weren't able to do that in the first quarter. Right now, they're putting three plays back to back and they're taking pressure off a of seven that he doesn't have to do much with his legs or his arm, just hand it off and watch him run. Seven minutes, 12 seconds left to go second quarter. First and 10, Hokies. Vick with play action. Swings it out complete to Andre Davis, but he'll go down right at the line of scrimmage and maybe lost a half yard. Quick coverage from both Quincy Hips and Philip Buchanan for the Miami Hurricanes. Quincy Hips did a nice job of sprinting from that defensive end position all the way out to the wide receiver spot. And it looks like number 88, Andre Davis, who came into the game banged up, is still down on the Orange Bull turf. Having trouble getting up, he came in. Had some problems with his lower legs coming into the game, Frank. Yeah, he has bursitis in one of his feet. And let's take another look at the uh, quick screen to the wide receiver, Howard Clark, coming on the blitz. But the arm strength of Vic gets rid of it. And yeah, Quincy Buchanan and Quincy Hips there together for the tackle. But you see Davis staying down in, in a lot of pain. He's walking off very gingerly. You see the brace on his left ankle. And that would be a big loss for the Hokies. He was questionable coming into the game. And, of course, he is their star punt returner. He has not returned to punt today. Ronyel Whitaker has taken over that duty. It is second and 10 with 6 minutes and 50 seconds left to go second and quarter. Hokies, the slot left formation. Vic gave it to Suggs, tripped in the backfield as Quincy Hips made nice penetration, disrupted the blocking scheme, and then Clark and Morgan covered Suggs after a gain of a yard. Yeah, Clark and Morgan really cleaning up on the play. That time, Suggs having no running room to the short side of the field. Good job at the point of attack, Frank. Right in the backfield right there. And then you see number 45, Howard Clark and Morgan doing a nice job scraping down the line of scrimmage to hold the Tech offense to a minimal gain. Third and nine for the Hokies. Wilford splits wide left. Emma Johnson wide to the right. Miami with a one-man blitz. Vic on the option, and Jamal Fumble. Green got him down. Fumble. Let's see who got it. It's Miami's football. Chris Campbell, number 48, coming up with the recovery as Jamal Green stripped it, and the Canes defense comes up with their first turnover of the day. Frank, that's a terrible call by the Virginia Tech offensive staff. You can clearly see that Michael Vick does not want to run the football because he cannot run the football, and he wanted to find a place on the ground to get down, but that time it was stripped immediately watch Michael Vick he's so tentative running the football today. that's not him he's limping around and a good play is stripping the football by number 55 you see Jamal Green and then two Miami Hurricanes right there at the point of attack but that's not Michael Vick attacking a, the, the option play down the line watch he's just running very gingerly Frank watch 92 it's actually Damian Lewis number 92 who made the strip after Green made the initial contact now the ball's still in and here comes Lewis number 92 so Credit Damian Lewis with the forced fumble and Chris Campbell with the recovery. Five minutes and 52 seconds left to go in the first half. And I'll tell you what, Miami would love a nice, long, sustained drive here, John. Take it down toward halftime. We have 5.52 left in the second. It's 14 for Miami, nothing for Virginia Tech. Right back on Fox Sportsnet after this. Bye -bye. 
Rich, we're going public with the news. Let me know how soon you can get everyone together. I email me. Andy, David, can you deliver four cases of champagne? Hold on. By three? Great. Introducing Nextel Online, the new wireless internet services from Nextel. On these roads of life, you're going to find butchers, bakers, and probably the occasional candlestick maker. Moms, dads, aunts and uncles, picking kids up, dropping stuff off, saying goodbye, and coming home. Marathon knows these roads of life well, and we'll be there to make sure everyone feels a little bit better about traveling them. An American company. Wednesday, November 8th, the Panthers face off against the Montreal Canadiens. Puck drops at 7.30. Hi, Matt Smith, inviting you to join us tonight for the 11 p.m. Florida Regional Sports Report. And I'm Keith Leibowitz. It's a full 30 minutes of sports news surrounding your hometown team. Atlanta Magic looking for magic with one of those stars back in action. And the latest BCS poll is out. The Florida schools are seeing orange. It's 30 minutes of nightly sports news, 100% dedicated to Florida home teams. Join us tonight for the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report on Fox Sports Net. Five fifty-two left to go, second quarter. The West End Zone crew. This is our house, and it's so far it is Miami's at a 14-0 lead. Frank Fort, John Kajemi with you on Fox Sports Net from the Orange Bowl. Miami first and 10 at the 27 after the fumble recovery by Chris Campbell. Michael Vick, since he entered the game, two for four passing for nine yards, three rushes for five yards, and a fumble. Canes first and 10 at their 27. Davenport and Jackson, the running backs. Dorsey, and that ball just slipped completely out of his hands. He was going for Santana Moss on the far sideline. Corey Bird had the coverage. Miami very lucky that pass wasn't intercepted because I'm not sure if someone hit Ken Dorsey's arm or it just, as you said, Frank, slipped out of his hand, a pure timing route to the outside. Had Santana Moss on the far sideline, but that's a tough throw to start with from one hash to the sideline. Let's see, no one, clearly no one around him, Frank, just a bad ball come out. It came out bad out of Ken Dorsey's hands. It's very lucky that Corey Bird did not break on that ball to intercept it. 6 of 12 for 123 yards on and a touchdown for Ken Dorsey so far in this football game on 2nd and 10. Loss in motion across the formation. And now whistles and flags down as Delay. play clock has run out. Delay game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remain 2nd down. Not a good sign right now, Frank, for Miami's offense the last two series. This is a point in the game where you got 5.48 left to go. You, you do not want to give Virginia Tech an opportunity to score before halftime. You have to take it, the bull by the horns, if you could say it, on offense and really move the chains, get some clock, and maybe get a scoring opportunity out of it. But you can't go backwards right now as Miami is. 2nd and 15, three wide out formation for the Canes. Dorsey facing a four-man rush. Dorsey's pass cut by Moss up at the 39-yard line, and that's good for a Miami first down as he picked up 17. House right and Summers had the coverage, but not close enough. Yeah, Summers not close enough to Santana Moss, who did an excellent job of finding the soft spot on the short side of the field in the curl route. Ken Dorsey going back had nice protection, but at the end he does get hit at the end of this play by 53 Channing Reed, but hang, hung in there long enough to get the ball down before Phillip Summers could make the tackle. You see Santana going, yeah, move the chains. That's a first down. First and 10 Canes, close to their 40-yard line. Jackson with the football, tries to bounce it outside. Cuts back at the 40 and will get about three yards. Number eight, Phillip Summers, the outside linebacker, making the tackle after a pickup of three. Five minutes, 14 seconds, and the clock moving here in the second quarter. And that is a dyed-in-the-arm hurricane thing. There he is, right there. Full house at the Orange Bowl. James Jackson today, 10 carries, 39 yards for the Canes. 
Second down and seven for Miami from their 43. Dorsey gives to Jackson. Jackson to the 45, 50. James Jackson in Virginia Tech territory, taken down by Corey Bird at the Tech 46 yard line. But Jackson will pick up the Miami first down. That time James Jackson gets the afterburners going a little bit, gets through the hole untouched, and then tries to get to the outside. Good job up front by Miami trying to show play action past the offensive lineman. Then they get aggressive, and you see James Jackson going to the outside, tried to pick up a block on Corey Bird and Eric Green that time. Couldn't find anybody to take him, but did a nice job moving the chains. They gets across the 50-yard line. 13 yards for Jackson. Davenport, the fullback, with the carry. He gets to the Tech 43 or 44-yard line, where a bunch of Hokies to stack him up. Ben Taylor, the initial hit number 40, the outside linebacker. Gain was close to three. We'll call it second and eight upcoming for the Hurricanes. Taylor and House right for the Hokies, the two linebackers to the strong side, middle and strong side linebacker. That time there to stop Nijay Davenport, and it's good to see Nijay into the football game, getting a carry, did a great job in that first series, blocking for James Jackson. Second down Miami, just inside the Hokie 45. Dorsey will throw. Going to go deep, looking for Daryl Jones, just overthrew him inside the Hokie 10-yard line. And that was a good throw against this win, John, and just out of the reach of Daryl Jones. Yeah, I think the wind actually knocked the football down. If he had got a little bit more air into that, the speedster on the outside, Daryl Jones would have been able to run under it. The wide receiver to the short side, it looked like Andre King never got off the football, so it was a really a one-man route on the audible. You can see the wind taking the football towards the middle of the field, and Eric Green trying to communicate with the corner on the outside, saying, hey, we got, can't let Jones get behind us. He's got great speed. Third and close to eight for Miami. They have to reach the Tech, 37. Out of the shotgun. Dorsey under blitz pressure. Complete to Shockey. Shockey got away from his man. Jeremy Shockey down the sideline. Still going. Jeremy Spoke in the end zone. Jeremy Spoke in the end zone today. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Just when you needed it with 3.30 left to go before halftime. Miami pushes the lead to 20 to nothing, but a great man-to-man -man route by Jeremy Shockey. He's the guy that had the big catch against Florida State for the touchdown. This time he gets in before halftime to push the lead to 20 to nothing. A nice block on the outside by Santana Moss as well to spring Shockey into the end zone. A 44-yard touchdown play from Ken Dorsey to Jeremy Shockey. A seven-play, 73-yard drive. Seavers on to attempt the conversion. Mosier with the hole. Kick is up and good. And with three minutes and 30 seconds left to go second quarter, it's Miami 21, Virginia Tech nothing. And a lightning strike from Dorsey to Shockey, who does most of it on his own. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a break as Jeremy Shockey scores his second touchdown as a Miami Hurricane. It's 21-0. BMW Roadsters. The undefeated season. Five Super Bowls. And more wins than any team since 1970. 35 years of Dolphins glory bears one truth. Whoever steps in, steps up. Now, the Dave Wanstead era begins. Witness the making of a new chapter in Dolphins history during the most exciting home schedule in years. 2000 Dolphins, the tradition continues. Call 305-573-TEAM for individual game tickets now. Par, par, birdie. Par, eagle, whoa. Par, par, hmm. Must be a Golf Magazine subscriber. How would you like to shave three, four, or five strokes off your game? Add 20 yards to your tee shots. Start one putting greens. Chip like a pro. Blast your way out of the bunker. Shoot lower scores and play the best golf of your life. Now you can by calling for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. Issue after issue, Golf Magazine gives you proven tips to improve your short game, develop better touch, fix your slice, straighten your hook, 
drop more putts, drive longer, and more. All to have you saying, par, par, birdie. When you call now for your free trial issue, you get the Golf Magazine gear bag with a roomy shoe compartment as your free gift. Call now for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all for just $15.94. Plus, get the Golf Magazine gear bag free with your paid subscription. Call the toll-free number on your screen now. Three minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Second quarter, a look at Jeremy Shockey, the sophomore from 8 Oklahoma, number 88 catching his second touchdown pass as a Miami Hurricane. And, well, he waits for the big games, John, the winner against Florida State and here against Virginia Tech. Well, he sure does. And man-to-man -man coverage, he eludes McAdam, number five, the free safety. Then he goes by Eric Green and gets a block by number six, Santana Moss, to spring him into the end zone. Seavers kickoff into the end zone against the win. Kendrick fumbles it, falls on it just inside the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback for Virginia Tech. Well, it's a good thing that ball didn't roll outside the goal line. His hand came out, but the ball stayed in the end zone. So Virginia Tech again will start at their 20-yard line. Three minutes and 24 seconds left to go second quarter. Miami would love a stop here, John. You want to go in to the uh, halftime. Shutting out Virginia Tech, that would be huge for Miami, and the Canes do get the ball to start the second half. And you can tell Michael Vick limping into the, to the huddle. He's not himself today, and you, and you don't blame him because he's just heard he had a high ankle sprain against Pittsburgh last week. Virginia Tech lucky to win that football game to come in. They win by three. Michael Vick comes in midway through the first quarter, but you can sure tell he's not himself today. First and 10, Hokies at their 20. Vick gives it to Suggs, looking for a cutback lane and has it again. Edward Reed and Chris Campbell combining on the tackle at the 33-yard line, but a gain of 13 for Suggs. Well, there's one guy on the field for the Virginia Tech Hokie offense that's not playing like an imposter. That's Lee Suggs. He's coming out and doing a great job hitting the hole with authority, moving the chains again for this Hokie offense. There's one bright spot in the offense. It's been Suggs' aggressiveness running through the, through the line of scrimmage. You see there 90 yards already on, on 10 attempts. First and 10, Hokies at their 33. Vic gave it to Suggs. Al Blades making the tackle after a gain of about three. Well, Al Blades, one of the best run support safeties you're going to find anywhere in America. So good at coming up and making those tackles. Lee Suggs has gashed the Canes a couple of times, but so far, Miami's been able to keep Virginia Tech out of the red zone and out of the end zone. 11 carries, 93 yards for Suggs. Second and seven for the Hokies with two and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. Vic on a straight drop with time. Wide open. Throwing deep down the field. Ed Reed playing center field, makes his fifth interception of the season at the Miami 20-yard line. Well, I expected Tech to take a shot deep with the wind at their back, and they did. But Edward Reed playing center field comes up with the pick. And Edward Reed now with five interceptions on the season to lead the Hurricanes. Well, Miami very fortunate in that situation that Emmett Johnson didn't have a healthy quarterback to throw him the football because he did a great job on the post route. On the bottom side of your screen, he's wide open. Al Blades comes in as a, there's no free safety in the middle of the field. He just takes too much time to Vic and lobs the football up. He was wide open early. He clearly beat Michael Rump to the short side, but there you see number 20, his partner in crime, Edward Reed, coming up with his fifth interception on the season. 2.14 left to go second quarter. On first down, James Jackson. Jackson breaking free at the 30 and out to the 35-yard line. Billy Hardy and Willie Pyle, a couple of safeties combining to make the tackle, but it's a 15-yard gain for James Jackson. Well, Jackson doing some gashing of his own on the Miami offensive side. Hardy and you said Willie Pyle, number 35, the only guys keeping Jackson from going a long time into the end zone that time. Nice point of attack blocking by number four, Nigel Davenport does a great job, and then speed gets him by House Wright, the middle linebacker. You can see the authority that Jackson's running with today. Of course, he stumbles, but gets the ball to Jackson, and he'll pick up five or six yards across the 40-yard line, a gain of six on first down. Clock still moving. Nathaniel Adibi, number 83, on the tackle for Virginia Tech. Well, Frank, when you've got a team down, what do you do? You want to kick them. You want to get into the end zone or try to get on the scoreboard again with a minute 29 left to go and counting down before halftime. Miami continuing the momentum at their own 41-yard line. Second and four for the Canes. 
Dorsey gives to Jackson on the counter, stacked up in the backfield, and down he goes. David Q made the initial hit and stacked James Jackson up. And then number uh, 94, Chad Beasley, finished him off. It's a loss of two. It'll bring up third down and about seven. Well, Pugh was the first guy there, number 71, David Pugh, the junior tackle in to get James Jackson, but after James Jackson has just run off two and three runs right at this Virginia Tech, right in the heart of their defense, the Hokie defense makes a stand. Now you may be wondering why Miami's not in a big hurry. They do get the ball to start the second half, and they want to take as much time off the clock here and not give Vic another shot before halftime. Dorsey on a rollout, under pressure, fires underneath for Daryl Jones, and incomplete, Jake Housewright had him blanketed on the coverage at the 40-yard line. So with 33 seconds left to go, Miami will punt it away. You would think if Miami was taking that stance, they probably would have tried to run it on third down to make Virginia Tech either use a timeout and against the win. If they don't want to do that, the clock would still be running. So my, I question Miami's play call on third down if you're not going to go for the first down. Freddie Capshaw in the kick. Ronyel Whitaker back at the Tech 25-yard line. It was clear Miami wasn't in any big hurry, John. Capshaw, they come after him, but they don't get it. And Freddie with a nice punt against the win. Whitaker at his 15. Aaron Mosier, they're the first man on the coverage. And DJ Williams makes the tackle at the 21-yard line. So there's 21 seconds left. First and 10 Hokies from their 21. Terrific kick that time by Capshaw. Nice coverage down there by Mosier and crowd. There you see DJ Williams jogging off to the sideline. He came in with an injured shoulder, but has played sparingly at the fullback spot. Still in there on special teams is the young freshman. 47-yard punt for Capshaw and a 7-yard return for Ronyel Whitaker. So a net of 40, and in this win, that's outstanding by Freddie Capshaw. So with 21 seconds to go, Tech has it first and 10, call it at their 22-yard line. It's like they're going to take a knee and take it to the house down 21 points, Frank. Vic under center will indeed take a knee. And with the clock moving at 18 seconds, we are coming to the end of the first half. And the Miami Hurricanes, with an outstanding first-half performance, lead the Virginia Tech Hokies 21 to nothing. I would caution you, however, that both West Virginia and uh, what was the other team? Syracuse led Virginia Tech at the half earlier this season. So there's a whole half of football left and a lot of things yet to be done by this Miami Hurricane team if they're to come out with a victory. But right now they're looking good. It's 21-0 Hurricanes. We'll be back with our halftime interviews, our highlights and stats right after this. Number five overall in the BCS, leading the Virginia Tech Hokies 21-0. The Hokies number two all the way around. First half stats, John Congemi and 101 yards rushing for Virginia Tech. But you look down at the bottom, 0 for 6 on third down and two turnovers for the Hokies. Well, that's the story right there. Third down conversions, Miami 3 of 7. The Hokies have not converted on third down. The two turnovers, thought Miami was very efficient offensively, although they've let Suggs get for 93 yards in the first half. They've done a nice job preventing Vic or Myers to do anything out of the quarterback spot. Dave Meyer on three drives, 52 yards, three possessions, three punts. Michael Vick, four drives, 18 plays, 94 yards, but two turnovers for the Hokies. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after this from the Orange Bowl. Miami Hurricanes with a 21-0 lead at halftime over the Virginia Tech Hokies, and we'll see if the Canes can hang on and record their second huge victory of the season. A team that they have lost five straight times to, the Hokies. And Miami right now owning this game 21-0. A lot of football left to play. But, John, if you're Virginia Tech, your concern is it appears that Michael Vick isn't close to being 100%. He came in on their fourth possession, four drives, got no points. And just, you know, especially running the option, just didn't seem to have that burst or that speed that, he's, that we're used to seeing from him. Well, he definitely, Frank, doesn't have that spark. You know, he doesn't have that dimension of, of eluding people and, and separating from defenders. And you've seen it in the first half. There's a number of defenders, especially Jamal Green and Cornelius Green on the outside on the corners, Dan Morgan, Chris Campbell, Howard Clark. They've done a nice job of surrounding either quarterback when they've tried to run the option on the perimeter. And really the one thing that Butch Davis and, and his team right now needs to concern themselves with is I... I Go back and look at that Florida State game. They went to the locker room 17 to nothing. They came out, played a very, very flat third quarter. They need to come out and take this football. They don't have to initially or actually score with the ball, but they'd like to move the chains, take some time off the clock, and continue that field position battle and really tell Virginia Tech it, that they don't have any chance of getting back into this football game. 
Virginia Tech will have the wind at their back here in the third quarter. As we begin the third, Miami will receive. Carter Worley, number 49, will kick it off. Daryl Jones and Andre Johnson stand at the Miami goal line. Worley, who kicked the game-winning field goal, a 27-yarder with 16 seconds left in last week's victory over the Pittsburgh Panthers to keep Virginia Tech undefeated. But that undefeated record is in jeopardy today at the Orange Bowl as the Canes have a 21-0 halftime lead. And the thing Miami has to continue to do is avoid those turnovers. Tech had two of them in the first half. Miami took care of the football, and that's big when you're talking about playing against Virginia Tech. And the ball blows off the tee, so Carter Worley take two. We talked about this win picking up as the game has, has started, it's, and it's progressed to now that the, the flags are really blowing from east to west, and that ball, uh, I don't think you'll have any trouble putting this ball into the end zone once he gets it teed up and get it ready to go. Game time conditions, it was an eight mile an hour win. Now I would say it's probably closer to 15. And we're looking at the flags at the uh, right side of the field, the open end of the end zone. Here's Worley's kick, and as John Kajemi projected, it's through the end zone for the touchback. Miami will start first and 10 from the 20 yard line. John, you didn't exactly go on a limb on that one, but no. we'll give you credit for it. No, I was just kind of, it looked like a two-club win from here, Frank. <laughs> and you would know about two-club <laughs> wins, my friend. John knows golf. And you know what? I do know something about this second half. If Miami can come out and, and start the way they did the ball game, come out and run the football, be aggressive up front. Ken Dorsey, you see his numbers, 50%, 185 yards and two touchdowns. But I'd like to see them come out and be aggressive early. First and 10 Canes from the 20, standard personnel group. Dorsey will throw on first down. Good protection, going for Moss, and incomplete. Broken up at the last moment, Willie Pyle and Eric Green, the cornerbacks, combining to break that play up. Well, that's about as aggressive as you can be. Go downfield to your big play guy, Santana Moss, number six. But Willie Pyle was really the guy that came in late to really jar the ball loose because Santana, this ball was thrown on a line so he can go up and get the football. There you see number 35, Willie Pyle, get his headgear right around the rib area of Santana Moss. The ball pops out, but a nice play on first down to take a shot down the field and let your guys make plays. And if Pyle doesn't hit him, Santana makes that catch. He had Green beaten for the catch. On a second and 10, Jackson on the toss sweep. Davenport in front. James Jackson loose at the 35, fumbles it but out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Well, Miami gets a break there as the ball rolls out at the 40. And that's one thing Virginia Tech will definitely try to do in the second. They try to do it all the time, but particularly trailing by three touchdowns, they're going to go for the strips. Well, Frank, Brian McKinney's known for his pass blocking, but on, on this play, let me tell you something. He stands up on the left side of that line of scrimmage and absolutely gains the corner for James Jackson. You see the ball fall out late, but on the inside, James McKinney did a terrific job, and Davenport does a nice job getting in the way of Eric Green down the field. Miami first and 10. From the 40, Jackson with the football. Gets only a yard before he's swarmed under by the Tech defense. We'll bring up the second and nine for the Hurricanes. Ben Taylor, the outside linebacker, number 40, credited with the initial hit. And for a guy who was questionable coming into this game, Ben Taylor's played pretty well. Ben Taylor's done an excellent job, and so has James Jackson. 15 attempts, 93 yards, 6.6 .6 average, and one touchdown. James came into the game averaging 5.3 yards per game, so he, per, per game, so he's over that total by about a yard. Miami second and nine to go on their own 40-yard line. A minute into the third quarter. Davenport in motion in the backfield. Dorsey to Davenport complete. Najee to midfield and into Tech territory at the 48-yard line with Phillip Summers hanging on to his ankles. But Najee Davenport picks up about 11 yards and a first down. Ken Dorsey and Najee Davenport making it look easy for this Miami offense. They came out with this play during the Florida State game, and I think it's very effective with Najee in the backfield because Look at the, it opens up wide open in the middle. Only one guy can make the tackle there. Number eight, Phillip Summers comes in and does make the tackle, but not until Nijay moves the chains very effectively. Ball on the hokey side of the 50. 13-28 to go, third quarter. First down, Canes in hokey territory. And whistles and a flag falls. Another and the play delay. clock has run out. You can see Ken Dorsey kind of wince his eyes in disgust. He's mad at himself. Five-yard penalty remains first down. We'll march it back to the Miami 47-yard line. And it'll be first and 15. 
quarterback takes it upon himself to be in charge of that 25 second clock sometimes you're you're out of control of that because the plays come in late or you have personnel changes but most of the time that's on your shoulders and I know Ken is an efficient quarterback you can tell by the way he runs his huddle and his offense trying to hurry them up to the line of scrimmage now six on the play clock Dorsey gives it on to Moss on the end around Moss was looking to throw the football, got away from one tackler, then shoved out at the Miami 43-yard line, right about at the line of scrimmage. Kevin McAdam making the tackle. Excuse me, that's going to be a loss of about four yards. Back to the 43. Line of scrimmage was the 47 of Miami. So Tech waiting for that play, which has worked twice for touchdowns this year for the Hurricanes. Yeah, that time Santana Moss really running out of real estate, nowhere to go, almost had a punt fake pump fake the play just so he can maybe get somebody up in the air he could get around the corner but it does lose some yardage on the play comes up with a second and 19 for the hurricane offense three wide receivers in the game for Miami Robert Williams is the tight end set on the right side of the formation Dorsey gives to Jackson on the draw Jackson got away from the first tackler into tech territory Jake Housewright making the tackle for the Hokies inside the Virginia Tech 45. So Jackson gets a lot of yardage back, and it'll be third and six for the Canes. Yeah, James Jackson like a bullet up the middle on the draw play. Take a look at the interior offensive line. You see a lot of orange shirts on, white shirts, a missed tackle right on the hash mark there, and James Jackson just lowers his head. You see 41, Jake Housewright in on the tackle, but a good job by 65, Martin Bibla up front. He breaks the tackle of Phillip Summers off the right side. James Jackson running hard early in this third quarter. James Jackson now with 107 yards on 16 carries. Third down and six for Miami. Dorsey over the middle, nearly intercepted by Taylor. Might have gone to the well once too often with that play. Well, I think on that play, Ken Dorsey had his mind made up where he was going with the football. He might have had Santana Moss over the top. You see the linebacker staying at home 40 in man coverage, Ben Taylor. He's in man coverage. You see Santana right behind him. Santana may have went to the house. That was man coverage. Ben Taylor staying at home on his guy, Nigel Davenport, read it all the way. Here's Capshaw's punt. Whitaker signals fair catch, and the ball bounces out near the 12-yard line, and they're going to mark it just outside the 11. So a good kick by Freddie Capshaw, pinning the Hokies back at their 11-yard line. 11.54 left to go third quarter. Canes lead Virginia Tech 21-0 back at the Orange Bowl after this. 11.54 left to go third quarter. Hurricanes lead the Hokies 21 to nothing. The college football season is red hot and the excitement continues. And you have an exclusive pass to an in-depth inside look at what's coming up with your favorite Florida college teams when you tune in at 10 a.m. for the Saturday morning college kickoff show. Join our experienced team of anchors and reporters as they highlight Florida college football. Start your morning off right with the Saturday morning college kickoff show Saturdays at 10 a.m. only on Fox Sports Net. Frank Forte and John Congemi with you at the Orange Bowl. Dave Meyer back in at quarterback for Virginia Tech. This is their eighth possession. Only one of those has started outside the Hokie 20-yard line. So they have not been in good field position most of the day. Give us the Suggs. Tries to skip through the hole, picks up a yard or two. Edward Reed there, the safety to make the tackle as he closed quickly. And John, in Edward Reed and Al Blades, Miami has two of the better run support safeties you're going to find anywhere. They're excellent. Excellent on first down. They both crowded the line of scrimmage. They have great speed, but great strength between Al Blades and Edward Reed. You see Blades there and Reed number 20. They're very aggressive on first down to get to the line of scrimmage, and they can take a ball carrier down by themselves. Second and nine for the Hokies. Working out of the eye. Meyer on the rollout. Looking downfield. Fires complete to Emma Johnson. Up at the 25-yard line, and he has first down yardage. Run out by Philip Buchanan, number 31. Frank, I think this is a wise decision to put Dave Meyer back into the football game, and I don't think they should have taken him out or put the hook on him so early. They made him run the option, which is something Dave Meyer really doesn't do. He likes to throw the football down the field. So what do they do here coming out in the third quarter? They put him on the roll a little bit, move the pocket, make it a little bit easier. They get a completion down the field to Wilford. Make it Wilford 19 instead of Johnson 18 on the reception. Ernest Wilford with the catch from the 25. So they make it Ferguson the fullback and Dan Morgan there to drop him down for a uh, gain of only a yard. Nice play by Morgan. Morgan showing no ill effects that time of the turf toe moving down the line of scrimmage. Showed great speed and toughness to get to the fullback, Jared Ferguson, number 27. 
Morgan, number 44, coming from the middle of your screen right there, goes behind the would-be blocker, Steve DeMassey, 61, the center, and corrals Ferguson for the tackle. You know, Dan comes into the game with 82 total tackles. If he reached that 100 milestone, it'll be the first time that a, a linebacker or anybody in the history of the Canes to get 100 tackles in four seasons. Second and nine, Cullen Hawkins in a fullback for the Hokies. Meyer to throw with time. Pass is incomplete. Was looking down the middle, it appeared for Cullen Hawkins, his fullback, or perhaps Browning win his tight end who fell at the 35-yard line. As you said, Frank, trying to get it to his fullback, Hawkins, 42 down the middle, but Dave threw that well over the head of even the defenders in the Miami secondary. Third, and a long eight for Tech. They stay with their standard personnel package. They don't go three wide very often. Miami showing some pressure at the line of scrimmage. Meyer on the rollout. Throw back the other way, and it is caught, but falling down is the receiver, and Miami will take a half force a punt. That was Browning win the tight end, number 93, on the throwback, but that play actually lost a yard. Miami very, very fortunate that ball was underthrown because as big as number 93 is win the tight end, there's only one person out here, and that's Chris Campbell. This play goes unquestionably for a touchdown. If he does if he does keep his feet, there's no one out in front in an orange jersey. Peasley to kick it away. Moss running up to his 40. Santana looking to pick his way by, but he will not get away at the 42-yard line. Number 14, Nick Sorensen. The outside linebacker, backup role today for Sorensen, made the tackle. Canes will take over at their 42 after a 36-yard punt by Robert Peasley. Well, this third quarter, Frank, is going exactly the way Miami would want it. No one scoring and keeping that 21-point cushion, but Miami doing a good job. The first series coming down, moving the chains, regaining field position, and then Virginia Tech unable to do anything offensively. 9.41 left to go third quarter. Timeout at the Orange Bowl. The Kings lead it 21 to nothing. Now you can receive a short text message over the internet. Then send back an answer. Or simply type in one of your own. Introducing two-way internet messaging, only from Nextel. Hi, I'm Ned Smith. Do you want to get away to a tropical island paradise? Atlantis and Fox Sports Net want to make your dreams come true. Your fantasy vacation could be just a click away. Now through November 26th, log on to Atlantis.com, click on the What's New box, and look for the regional sports report icon to register for the weekend getaway to Paradise Weepstakes. You could be on your way to a three-day adventure for two at the luxurious Atlantis Paradise Island Resort. So log on, double-click, and enter today. Courtesy of your 11 p.m. regional sports report at Atlantis Paradise Island. Hi, I'm Ed Smith inviting you to join us tonight for the 11 p.m. Florida Regional Sports Report. And I'm Keith Leibowitz. It's a full 30 minutes of sports news surrounding your hometown team. Atlanta Magic looking for magic with one of those stars back in action. And the latest BCS poll is out. The Florida schools are seeing orange. It's 30 minutes of nightly sports news, 100% dedicated to Florida home teams. Join us tonight for the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report on Fox Sports Net. 9.41 left to go third quarter. Miami leading Virginia Tech by a score of 21 to nothing. Live the excitement of college basketball as the Canes return to the hardwood after an appearance in the Sweet 16. Season tickets start as low as $99. Call 1-800-GO-CANES for ticket information. Miami Hurricane basketball, run with us. And the Canes off and running with a 21-point lead. As we have 9.41 left to go third quarter, the fans whooping it up at the Orange Bowl. And as you said, John, during the break, uh, Miami... Things are going their way here in the third quarter. No turnovers, they want to keep possession. Of course, they'd love to score, but right now you want to try and shorten up the game. First and 10 from the 42. Dorsey gives to Jackson. Jackson, cutting back, changing directions, gets across the 45 to the 48, 49 yard line before Eric Green is there. Along with Nick Sorensen, number 14, and number 70, Kevin Lewis, a backup defensive tackle into the game. 
Jackson picked up seven on first down. Well, right now, Miami's going to have to withstand everything Virginia ha Tech has on defense because this is their last push. You see him being very aggressive at the point of attack. Joaquin Gonzalez, 73, pushing back. It looked like number 80, number 83 in the backfield, but also great running by James Jackson, number 21. Must have ran about 15 yards to get about eight. Second down, just shy of midfield. Give to the fullback, Davenport, bursting three at the 40. Najee to the 35. Najee Davenport heading for the end zone, and Najee Davenport scores a touchdown for the Hurricanes. A 50-yard touchdown run, and that play popped wide open. You don't see most fullbacks in any kind of league have that kind of acceleration because he's a tailback. He's playing fullback today. Najee Davenport, and as you said, Frank, right at the point of attack off the left guard, just open, wide open in the middle of the football field. Najee Davenport going in for the score with 8, 8.52 left to go. Miami 27, Virginia Tech still with the goose egg. Great job by Miami's offensive line. And the fullback play pops wide open for Najee Davenport, the junior out of Miami Central High School. His fourth rushing touchdown of the year and his longest run of the year. His previous best was 23 yards. Seavers out of Mosier's hold, puts it up and through. And with 8.52 left to go in the third quarter, the Hurricanes have jumped out to a 28-0 lead over the number two Virginia Tech Hokies. We'll take it to break with Najee Davenport on the loose. Hosting a major golf tournament takes a lot of preparation, and no one knows that better than Arnold Palmer. Just ask Susan, his manager. With just one call, Office Depot delivers everything she needs to file dozens of registration forms and stacks of publicity folders. Yet even with all the last-minute details, Susan still finds time to take on an even bigger challenge. 18 holes with the boss. Taking care of business. Office Depot. Taking care of business. Hi, Panther fans. I'm Jeff Rimmer. I'm Bridget Whitney. And I'm Christy Berry. We're here to face off for families. Fox Sports Net and the Panthers need you to help us provide meals to hundreds of South Florida families this Thanksgiving. Just bring non-perishable food items like these to the Panthers game on the 10th of November. With your donation, you could win an autographed Panthers jersey. All food collected goes to benefit families in the local area. We'll see you November 10th. Face off for families, a partnership between the Florida Panthers, Fox Sports Net, and you. Rugged, tough, the Rhino is built to take grueling off-road abuse. And so can Rhino Lining's Tough Stuff Truck Bed Liners. If you work your truck hard, then you need a Rhino Lining sprayed-on polyurethane lining to protect your truck bed. Rhino Linings is the world's leading sprayed-on liner company. Their Tough Stuff liner sprayed on up to a quarter inch thick is virtually indestructible polyurethane. And unlike plastic liners, which don't stop truck bed rust, a Rhino lining protects your investment permanently. A Rhino lining only takes a few hours to apply, and it's warranted by your dealer for as long as you own your truck. So if you want to protect your truck's value, get a Rhino liner. Call or log on right now. We'll send you a free brochure, a sample of Tough Stuff, and give you the name of the Rhino lining's dealer nearest you. Call now. Back at the Orange Bowl, the Miami Hurricanes <laughs> on Najee Davenport's 50-yard run take a 28-0 lead, and they're fired up in the west end zone. Somebody has an opinion about the BCS over <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I guess so. Let's take one more look at it, and look at the job by LaFair washing guys down to the inside. LaFair did a great job, but then it's all speed by Najee Dav Davenport. He does a great job of getting to the outside, and once he gets there, nobody's going to catch him. Eric Green tries to trip him up about the three, but Najee shooting into the sky for a touchdown. Hurricanes go, go way up, 28 to nothing. And John, we haven't seen it much this year. That's the Najee of old. Right. That's the pre-knee injury with Najee Davenport. The explosion from Najee Davenport, you're right. We haven't seen much of it, but that time you give him a little daily. And he cashes in for six. Todd Seavers will kick it off for the Hurricanes. Andre Kendrick back to receive for the Hokies. Some of the crowd at the Orange Bowl, a sellout crowd today. And they're seeing exactly what they'd hoped to see. The Miami scoring drive, two plays, 58 yards, 49 seconds. Aaron Mosier has left the game for Miami with cramps. He's expected to return it. That is not an uncommon malady for Aaron Mosier, who is a very heavily muscled young man. This kickoff falling short. You got to catch this. And it bounces loose, finally picked up by the Hokies. And Daryl McClover makes the tackle on the return by Wayne Ward. 
a third string tailback and a special team star for the Hokies. But that was nearly disastrous. Virginia Tech will start first and 10 from their 27, only their second possession today that has begun outside their 20 yard line. Eight minutes, 43 seconds left to go, third quarter. Miami leading 28 0. Meyer, the quarterback. Fakes the Suggs, end around to Emmett Johnson. Johnson is dragged down. Cornelius Green making the play for a loss of a yard. Cornelius Green just staying at home. The big junior, the 6'4", 250 pound defensive end, staying right where he should be. And the running back actually runs right into Cornelius Green. Actually, the wide receiver on the end around runs right into him. You see right here, the end around by number 18, Emmett Johnson, but nowhere to go. Big number 98 staying right where he should be. A lot of people pursuing to the football. You see number eight, Michael Rump coming in, as well as Philip Buchanan. The Canes are ready to play today. Pitch to Suggs. Cuts back, and Damian Lewis lays the smack down after a gain of only a yard. Good to see Damian Lewis playing like that. You're right. I was just going to say, it's good to mention a couple different names on defense. You always see Damian Lewis and Dan Morgan and, and Chris Campbell, the linebacker. A lot of guys around the football, like Jamal Green and Cornelius Green. And you can feel the excitement in the crowd today. It's a dominant performance on all three phases of the game today. Third and ten for the Hokies. Meyer out of the shotgun. Four-man rush for Miami. Meyer with time. Complete to Ferguson, his fullback, and he's bounced out of bounds at the 39, 38-yard line, but appears to have enough for the first down. Mike Rump making the tackle for the Hurricane defense. Yeah, that time not a lot of pressure on Dave Meyer, the quarterback. He finds Ferguson, the fullback. He came into the game only with one reception for five yards, but that'll move the chains for the Hokie offense. All alone on the Miami sideline goes up there. Tough fullback, 5'9", 217, as you said, a, a more like a bowling ball once he gets rolling. Tough to bring down. Gain was 11, first and 10 from the 38. Johnson and Wilford, the wide receivers for the Hokies. Suggs cuts back and doesn't find very much room. Howard Clark, number 45, made the tackle. Pretty much no gain. Howard Clark there, number 45, the weak side linebacker, along with Al Blades on first down. You'll see big number seven come in after Howard Clark delivers a pop. Watch him square up. Al Blades there as well, but a great tackle there by the weak side linebacker, the sophomore. Now Blades, of course, in run support. 15 carries, 98 yards for Suggs. Second and nine for the Hokies. Meyer with play action. Trying to set up the screen and does so. Suggs dragged out of bounds by Howard Clark as he reached the 47-yard line of Virginia Tech. And that'll be a yard and a half shy of a first down. Six thirty-seven left to go. Ronald Moody credit to catch uh, his first action in the ball game. Ronald Moody, a backup split end on that wide receiver pitch pattern. Howard Clark making the tackle, and it will be third and about a yard and a half for the Hokies at the 47-yard line. Give this to Suggs, and Suggs has it into Miami territory as Chris Campbell makes the tackle, but that is enough for a Virginia Tech first down. Virginia Tech, Frank, trying to put something together here with 6.33 left to go in the third quarter, trying desperately to get on the scoreboard to narrow this deficit, but right now, Miami will, will be willing to trade a couple yards in a cloud of dust for that clock to continue to run down. 6.26 to go third quarter. Miami with a 28-0 lead. Suggs and Kendrick in the eye behind Meyer. From the game 49. Meyer with play action. Pocket collapsing. Locking it deep down the field and incomplete. He was intended for Emma Johnson at the Miami 12-yard line. Mike Rump had good coverage. This is what Dave Meyer loves to do, throw the football down. He knows he missed his wide receiver on the Miami sideline. Emmett Johnson going down, trying to get behind the secondary for the Canes. That time the ball looked like it just hung up maybe a little bit too long and a missed opportunity by Virginia Tech. Second and 10 for the Hokies. Look at the Virginia Tech offensive huddle. Sean Witten, number 26 in at wide receiver. 
East flank way out to the top of the screen. Emma Johnson is the slot receiver. Meyer checking off at the line of scrimmage. Gives it to Suggs, and Suggs goes down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. William Joseph, number 94, had him around the ankles and made the play for the Kane defense. He called it. He's having a big game at that defensive tackle spot. William Joseph, only a sophomore, 6'5", 290. Doing a nice job at the point of attack. No gain on the play. Third and 10 for Virginia Tech as Miami now comes in with their dime defensive package. Leonard Myers, who had battled a strained foot last week into the game, along with James Lewis as an extra safety. Looks like they're trying to come after Dave Meyer. Man coverage by Miami. Gains on the blitz. Meyer delivers underneath, complete to Emma Johnson. No, they call it incomplete. Said he short hopped it. Mike Rump had the coverage, and it's fourth down and 10 for the Hokies. Miami coming with a lot of pressure. Eight guys on the line of scrimmage. They try to get to Dave Meyer before he can make a play. And as you said, really forced the football. Hurried it a little bit, had a wide receiver, but it would have been a couple yards short of the first down anyway. Robert Peasley into punt for the Hokies. And Philip Buchanan. A look at him. Buchanan's played most of the way at corner for Miami. As Leonard Meyer still struggling with the foot injury. Santana Moss makes a fair catch at the nine yard line. Well, Miami will start it there, first and 10. They lead it 28 nothing with 5.14 left to go third quarter. Haven't spoken much about Leonard Myers and uh, in the locker room it was funny last week after Virginia Tech, or after Louisiana Tech rather, Chuck Pagano, the defensive backs coach, said to him, Leonard, I appreciate the effort because Miami had to use so many defensive backs last week against that scheme and Myers out there playing on a sprained foot and really, I think this was his first action today, which uh, came with under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Philip Buchanan got the start at cornerback and has played most of the way. He's done. A, he's had a courageous job getting into this football game as much as he has. As you said, Frank, he's been hampered with injury the last couple of weeks. Miami first and ten from their nine. See if they can punch out a first down or two. Cut Portis tries to gain the corner and goes down right at the line of scrimmage. Corey Bird, the rover, number 16, junior out of Mays Landing, New Jersey, making the tackle. Defensive guys on the sideline, huddling with Greg Schiano, the coordinator. They've done an excellent job of finding the football, finding Lee Suggs when he's had it. Lee not a big target at six foot 207, but they found him enough to hold him under 100 yards, and that's saying a lot because he averages close to that per game. Second and 10, Hurricane. Dorsey gives to Portis, and he'll get dragged down after a gain of only a yard. Jim Davis, number 95, a freshman from Highland Springs, Virginia, makes the play. That'll bring up third and nine. Let's see on third down if this Miami team can convert, keep the clock going with 424 left to go in this third quarter. All on the shoulders of Ken Dorsey. Looks like Clinton Portis may hobble out of the football game as well. On defense, you have to worry about number 20 as well. Edward Reed looked like he was limping after that third down play, putting pressure on the quarterback, Meyer. Portis, of course, coming off the three broken toes and seeing his first action and almost a month last week against Louisiana Tech on third and nine. Jackson in the game at tailback, and Jackson has the football. James Jackson looking for a crease, and gets up to the 17-yard line. Phillip Summers made the tackle, penalty flag down, back at the Miami seven-yard line. And this is about 30 yards away from the ball. I'm not sure, it looked like number two, Ronyel Whitaker, and number 87, Reggie Wayne, were going at it. About 30 yards from where the ball ended up going down. Ken Dorsey talking with one of the officials. And let's see what Dennis Hennigan has to say. Dead ball personal foul on the Canes. So that'll move it half the distance back to the goal and still be a punting situation for Miami. As Ken Dorsey leaves the field. Yeah, that Ken trying to get an explanation from the line judge. He's the guy, I think, that threw the, the penalty, either he, him or the field judge. And I'm sure Dorsey's saying, hey, he, he's hitting our guy in the mouth, too, so uh, why doesn't it go both ways? Right. In any case, they'll, the penalized, they'll penalize Miami back to the uh, eight-yard line, and it'll be fourth down. Ronyel Whitaker in to receive the punt. And Butch Davis making his case to the official. Capshaw gets his kick away. High spiraling kick. Whitaker at his 46. 
and he goes down to Jamel Weaver, number 58, after initially Andre Johnson made the first contact, and then Jarrell Weaver, Jarrell, not Jamel, Jarrell, number 58, making the tackle at midfield. Yeah, Jarrell makes the tackle, but credit Andre Johnson going down, the freshman wide receiver in on special teams. He breaks down, gets an, a big enough piece of him so Weaver can come in and clean up. Against the wind, a 45-yard kick big by kick. Capshaw and a four-yard return, so a net of 41. Again, excellent for the Miami special teams. 3.27 left to go, third quarter. Miami leading 28-0. Dave Meyer still the quarterback for the Hokies. I think he'll go the rest of the way, Frank. On a first and 10 from midfield. That is the backup tailback, number 32, Wayne Ward getting the carry, and he picks up six and a half yards down close to the Miami 43-yard line. Ward coming in, running tough, and there again on first down, you see number seven, Al Blades, in on the tackle. You'll see most of the time on first down, Al Blades will move down to that strong safety position. He'll rotate with Edward Reed. Does a nice job on first down, stopping the run. Edward Reed is back in the ball game, by the way. John, you mentioned he might have right. been limping after the last possession, but Ed is in there. Second and a long three for the Hokies. Fake pitch, give to Hawkins the fullback, and he'll get close to the first down at the 40-yard line. Dan Morgan and Chris Campbell combining on the tackle for Miami. And they will mark it just shy of the 40. It'll be third and about the length of a football. Two and a half minutes left to go third quarter. Clock is moving. Miami with a 28-0 lead over the Hokies. Sean Witten, number 26, the only wide receiver in for Virginia Tech on this third and short. Give to the fullback, Cullen Hawkins. He's stacked up, but he might have enough for the first down. Howard Clark on the tackle, along with Jarrell Weaver. He didn't get much, but he got enough, and it is a hokey first down. Exactly right, Frank. Didn't need much. Just needed to move the football along the line of scrimmage, maybe get a short yard. That's exactly what Colin Hawkins did. Host of Miami defenders were there, as you see a host of fans in the stands very excited about this outcome of the game. 28-0 right now with two minutes left to go in the third quarter. First and 10, Hokies just inside the Miami 40. Lee Suggs back in a tailback. Suggs has the football. And gets through a hole. We'll pick up six, almost seven yards. Philip Buchanan there along with Edward Reed to make the tackle for Miami. Yeah, also Howard Clark in on the play. I've been impressed with Lee Suggs. He's been running the football very impressively this afternoon. Very tough runner, low to the ground, but he gets going in a hurry. Doesn't need a lot of steps to get up to top speed. Looks like he hits top speed right away, and they're on the sidelines. See Clinton Portis getting a, the tape job cut off, maybe to get retaped tape that ankle or something wrong with the foot trying to check out the ankle there on the sideline. Check going with the double tight end on this second down and about four. Meyer on the option. Step back. Looking to throw. Meyer still looking. Has wide his tight open. end wide open. Caught. Cullen Hawkins will score the touchdown but a flag is down at the Miami 20 yard line. That might be some linemen downfield. Not sure but the field judge way on the Miami sidelines through the penalty flag. There may have been some linemen downfield. Pass interference on Virginia Tech. That'll bring it back. Well, clearly that was not the in intended target as the play started. But as Meyer had nowhere to go with the football, Haw Hawkins broke open. Well, they're trying to fake the option down the line of scrimmage and then pull back and try to get the fullback, Colin Hawkins, down the short side. You see them recox and then he throws it down. He's wide open. All he has to do is get it close. And Hawkins just make Al Blades miss around the five yard line. But pass interference might have been on the other side of the football field. Well, a break for the Hurricanes with a minute and three seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And it'll be second and 19 now for the Hokies. And Virginia Tech's coaches on the other sideline pretty upset with that call. From the Miami 48. Give to Suggs. Suggs dragged down as he crossed the 45 to the 44-yard line of Miami. Jonathan Vilma, the freshman, in at middle linebacker making the play. Talk about young defensive players you're impressed with. Jamal Green 
Also, Gerald Weaver and Cornelius Green. Jonathan Thilma is the guy that's really come on this season, Frank, and done an excellent job in Miami's diamond nickel package and spelling Dan Morgan when he's been out with a couple nicks. There you see Suggs' number, 19 attempts for 114 yards. Hasn't gotten to the end zone, and Virginia Tech's offense hasn't reached the end zone as well. On third and 14, Miami with a one-man blitz. Pass over the middle, deflected in, almost intercepted by Matt Walters as he dropped out in the zone blitz. What an athletic play by Matt Walters in the zone blitz. He comes from a three-point stance, drops back in the middle of the field, tips it to himself, and almost makes a terrific interception. But in any regard, what a terrific athletic play by Walters. Watching in the middle of your screen, big number 91, he's dropping back. Right in the middle of your screen, he goes up with the right hand, almost tips it to himself. <laughs> Great play by the defensive tackle. Derek Carter, number 85, the intended receiver. Eighth punt of the day for Tech. Robert Peasley will try to hang it up. Santana Moss calling for the catch, and it is down inside the four-yard line, Wayne Ward, and that's how you cover a punt in the red zone. First down Miami at their three-yard line with 15 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Miami with a 28-0 lead in. John, all you want to do here is avoid anything silly, avoid the turnover. A 41-yard punt, by the way, by Peasley, no return. Well, right now, you'd want to come out, run the football, get a couple yards, make that clock go down to zero, start with the wind in the fourth quarter. Even though the ball's backed up inside your own five-yard line right now, you'd love to have that wind behind you just for any benefit of a punt. First down, Canes from their own three. B.J. Williams, the fullback. James Jackson is the tailback. Robert Williams, a tight end in motion as Miami goes double tight. There's Jackson across the five to the six-yard line. Gets three. Phillip Summers there along with number 40, Ben Taylor, the outside linebacker. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. After three periods of play in the Orange Bowl, it's Miami leading Virginia Tech 28 to nothing. We'll be back with the fourth quarter from the Orange Bowl right after this. Start of the fourth quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Miami leads it 28 to nothing over the Hokies. For extended coverage of your favorite Florida sports, watch your 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report Florida Edition every night on Fox Sports Net. It's the only 30-minute sports news program dedicated to bringing you the latest home team scores, highlights, and interviews. Your 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report Florida Edition every night only on Fox Sports Net. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you and Sebastian the Ibis whooping it up at the Orange Bowl as the Canes lead at 28 nothing entering this fourth quarter. Second down, and close to six for the Hurricanes. Reggie Wayne, the only wide receiver in the game for Miami as they go double tight end. Dorsey looking for his fullback and overthrew B.J. Williams out at the 10-yard line. Phillip Summers on the coverage for Virginia Tech. It'll bring up third down and a little more than six for Miami. You know, just a little while ago, we were talking about it just a short time ago. That fullback position was really non-existent early in this season. All of a sudden, with the emergence of D.J. Williams and uh, due to the fact of the injury to Will McPartland, and hopefully he'll be able to, to get back and play sometime soon. But you've had Nigel Davenport and a lot of explosion come out of that fullback spot, Frank. John, do you take a shot deep here on third and six? I don't think so. I think you try to get the first down and move the chains. Dorsey on a pitch to Jackson. Jackson trying to get to the corner and pushed out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Shy of the first down, Eric Green pushed him out. And Miami will be in a punting situation. So a conservative call on the third and six with a four-touchdown lead. I think you want to put it in the hands of your special teams, especially the way Todd Seavers has been kicking the football. And Freddie Capshaw's I'm had sorry. an excellent day punting. Yeah, Freddie, I'm sorry. Butch Davis looks on his offense coming off the field, and the Miami special teams will try and root it out of there. Capshaw standing in his end zone. Ronnie L. Whitaker at the Tech 45. Good snap from Harvey. Average punt by Capshaw. It's going to hit near midfield and roll out just inside Virginia Tech territory, and they're going to mark it right at about the 50-yard line. So 41-yard punt by Capshaw. More importantly, no return. A good directional kick by Freddie, 41 yards on the net, and he continues to do an outstanding job today against uh, a team that is reputed to have the best special teams in the country, and that reputation well-founded. 14.43 to go in the fourth. Miami leads it 28-0. Time out at the Orange Bowl. We'll be back after this. I need teamwork down there. They gotta stay strong. Come on. 
function of paralysis. Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья! Итак, мы с вами в Хабаровске на чемпионате по пощечинам. Сейчас видно, что чемпионат пройдет великолепно. Уж так сильны оба претендента. Итак, смотрим. Уже сейчас видно, что чемпионат пройдет великолепно. Как и обещали нам его организаторы. Единственный претендент на чемпионский титул Розановский без... I'm Ned Smith. Do you want to get away to a tropical island paradise? Atlantis and Fox Sports Net want to make your dreams come true. Your fantasy vacation could be just a click away. Now through November 26th, log on to Atlantis.com, click on the What's New box, and look for the regional sports report icon to register for the weekend getaway to Paradise Weepstakes. You could be on your way to a three-day adventure for two at the luxurious Atlantis Paradise Island Resort. So log on, double-click, and enter today, courtesy of your 11 p.m. regional sports report at Atlantis Paradise Island. The Miami Hurricanes, destroying everything in their path, crushing, punishing, pounding their opponents, and demolishing dreams. Watch Hurricane football all season long on Fox Sports Net. Florida Sports Tonight, bringing you the hometown sports scene like no one else with exclusive interviews, in-depth analysis, and coverage that gets you closer to the game. Florida Sports Tonight, presented by Verizon. Frank Beamer, the head coach of the Hokies, and right now his team trails by four touchdowns with 14.43 to go in the football game here at the Orange Bowl. And Frank hasn't been in this position very I'm just much. Just going to say that, you know, he's 5-0 and against Miami in the last five tries, and now he's looking at 14.43 left to go in this football game, down by 28 points, and without his star, Michael Vick at quarterback, so it's a desperate situation for Virginia Tech right now. Vick has not played at all in the second half. Dave Meyer, the quarterback. With Ferguson and Suggs in the eye behind him. Fake to Suggs. Meyer down the middle, caught, and inside Miami's 30 yard line. It's Browning win the tight end. And a Miami player a little slow to get up. Can't pick up the number quite yet. But it will be a first down. It is Philip Buchanan, the cornerback. A gain of 24 yards to the Miami 26 yard line on the completion to the tight end win. Well, Wynn was down the middle in a, in a strike by Dave Myers. That's the best throw he's had all afternoon. After the play action, he stands up tall in the pocket. See his tight end right there. 93 going down. Nice throw down the middle. Goes up to get it. There you see Philip Buchanan going up to try to make the tackle. That's where he gets injured. May have had the wind knocked out of him, but two hokey receivers right in a row. Somebody running the wrong route, but still finds his tight end down the middle. And you see Philip Buchanan stay down. Looks like he's okay. May have just had the wind knocked out of him. Phillip, the sophomore from Lehigh, Florida, which is over in the Fort Myers area. And Greg Schiano talking to him about the coverage. Today's attendance, 77,410 in the Orange Bowl. So it's first down for the Hokies at Miami's 26. Leonard Myers, number 22, into the ball game. Give to the fullback, Ferguson. And Ferguson picks up five to the 21-yard line. Al Blades making the tackle for the Hurricanes, along with Howard Clark. Second and five coming up for the Hokies with 14 minutes and eight seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Hokies narrowing in on the 20-yard line. I'm not sure if they've crossed Miami's 20-yard line today. I don't believe they have. I'll, I'll double check it. They have not. This is Suggs. Suggs stood up in the hole by Dan Morgan and down he goes for no gain. And they still haven't, Frank. The Miami Hurricane defense, Dan Morgan, leads the charge that time. Dan Morgan playing with a turf toe, and he's been there in there virtually all the way. Lee Suggs has been able to move the pile, but not on big number 44. Look at him stand him right up in the middle of that pile, and then he gets help from Chris Campbell. Really, the help unneeded because Dan Morgan was there trying to get the crowd into this football game or back into it, leading by 28 points. Third and about four for the Hokies. Meyer with play action, has time. Over the middle, caught, Browning win, down at the one yard line. Edward Reed made the tackle and a good throw by Meyer. They've had some success in the last couple of plays going down the middle on the University of Miami. 
This time the throw goes over the linebackers again to Browning win. A nice throw, makes himself large at the goal line. Tackled by Edward Reed, keeps him out of the end zone, but a nice play action fake. Really nobody in the middle of the field. You see Dan Morgan going outside. Campbell not there in time and catches the football in front of Edward Reed. On first and goal, Ferguson stood up at the line of scrimmage. He did not get in. Damian Lewis in there, along with Matt Walters. Second and goal. Browning win the tight end. John only had four catches coming into the game, and he has two on this drive. Yeah, nice job at the line of scrimmage right there by Damian Lewis and the rest of the guys in the orange jerseys. You see number 55, Jamal Green, saying, no, he didn't get in, no way. Second and goal for the Hokies. Meyer gives to Suggs, and Suggs puts his head down and scores from a yard out. Lee Suggs gets Virginia Tech on the board with 12.23 left to go. Well, this Virginia Tech offense was in desperate need of getting into the end zone. As you said, Frank, with 12.23 left to go, they finally strike six points. Suggs goes in from the one. Carter Worley on to attempt the extra point as Lee Suggs scores his 18th touchdown of the season. Talk about productivity. It was a six-play, 50-yard drive, taking two minutes and 20 seconds. Worley's kick is up and good, and with 12.23 left to go, Virginia Tech has cut into the Miami margin. It's now the Hurricanes 28, the Hokies 7. Back at the Orange Bowl right after this. In a test to determine how well luxury sedans protect drivers, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety recently named the BMW 328i the best pick in its class. But BMW believes that in a contest to protect lives, there should be no winners, and certainly no losers. Because at BMW, we're as interested in saving lives as we are in selling cars. It killed my father, it killed my brother, and both my sisters. Pancreatic cancer killed them all. We don't know how or why they got it, but we knew it, and it was already too late. There still isn't any way to detect it early or to treat it effectively. But we do know the cure, research. Just look how far we've come with other diseases. The National Sports Report at 10 and midnight. 12-23 left to go. There's the touchdown maker, Lee Suggs, getting Tech on the board at 28-7. And it will kick off to Miami now. Keep the drive alive. Join the University of Miami Hurricanes as they take on conference rival, the Pittsburgh Panthers, on November 11th at noon in the Orange Bowl. That's a noon kickoff. For tickets, call 1-800-GO-CANES. So Miami now, after surrendering their first score of the afternoon, We'll try to do a little ball control and answer back. Carter Worley to kick off. Daryl Jones and Andre Johnson beat for the Hurricanes. This kick will come to Andre Johnson at the 10. Johnson will get back to the 20. Lost the football, and Daryl Jones got on it. Oh, boy. That's got to give Butch Davis heart failure. You no, know, Frank, I'm seeing the ball go to Johnson, and I'm saying he hasn't touched the football all day. It's a bad situation to get a guy into a game in special teams, but he takes it, and, and then the ball gets stripped. But there's the senior, the guy recovering the football. Daryl Jones did an excellent job. Actually, the junior wide receiver catching the football after it was put on the ground by Johnson. There it is right there, hand on the football from away from the ball. Johnson could do nothing but watch from where he is. Looked like number three. Provit, the linebacker, in to strip the football for the Hokies. Well, you got to hold on with both hands there against this team because that's what they do. They create turnovers. They they score in bunches. I mean, you got to take care of the football. Dorsey will throw on first down. Pump fakes. He's going deep for Santana Moss. He's got him. Santana Moss trying to keep his balance, and Santana Moss will take it to the house for an 80-yard Miami touchdown. The Canes coming right back as Ken Dorsey goes 2-6, 4-6 for the touchdown. 
touchdown. Wow, what a, what a play right there. First down on the 20-yard line. Santana Moss streaking down the sidelines. They were just a play away from turning it over. That time, Ken Dorsey finds him going down the Tech sideline, 80 yards for a big hurricane touchdown. 12 minutes and one second to go in the game, and Miami answers right back. Quick strike offense. Santana Moss, the senior out of Carroll City High School. Seaver's conversion try is good. 12 minutes and one second left to go in the football game. The Hurricanes back on top by 28. It's Miami 35, Virginia Tech 7, Santana Moss is second. Touchdown catch of the day. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl right after this. Santana Moss, four catches today, 154 yards and two touchdowns. Let's take another look at the touchdown connection. Dorsey, again with good time, John. Yeah, this offensive line has done a terrific job. He pump fakes first, then he just lets it rip down the right side. Nothing Eric Green can do but just sit and watch. Now he's going to try to trip him around the goal line to get him out of the end zone. But Santana Moss keeps his feet, walks into the end zone. Just a great throw, hits him right in stride. Santana regains his balance about the 20-yard line, and nobody's going to catch Santana once he gets a, a burst going like that. Santana Moss, the big play man for the Miami Hurricanes. Really, after overcoming that ankle injury early in the season, John, he has been everything he was expected to be in the second half of the season. And as Ken Dorsey sits there and takes a sip of Gatorade, that'll get you healthy right away when you look at the numbers. 10 of 21 for 276, three touchdowns, bounces back after what you want, many would say a lackluster performance last week against Louisiana Tech comes back with three scoring touchdowns. Hey, many would say we both said it. I mean, you know, we got to call it the way it is, and, and it was kind of lackluster last week, with the especially in the third quarter. He was okay other than that third quarter. And there are Moss's numbers, as we told you, four for 154 and two touchdowns. But you had a feeling that Dorsey would come out and play solid today. Never he, had a doubt. He did against Florida State, and, and the coaches and the players all during the week expressed confidence that he would come out and play the type of ball game that he's capable of in this big game. He's that type of quarterback, Frank. He's played well in big games. He's done a nice job today. And I tell you, this Miami Hurricane offense has done a great job. you got to credit this offensive line. Every running back's had some room to run the football. Dorsey's had plenty of time against a, a stingy and a, an aggressive defense to stand in the pocket and throw the football. Todd Seavers will kick it off. Lee Suggs into return for Virginia Tech. Seavers kick. Suggs, six yards deep, lets it fly over his head and out of the end zone. And Virginia Tech, again, will start at their 20-yard line. So Miami reestablishing the four touchdown margin on the big strike to Santana Moss. Miami's defense now back on the football field. They've done a nice job today, really not allowing the big play. Only a couple strikes down the middle in the last series to Browning win. Other than that, this defense has been very stingy today. First and 10, and Meyer will work out of the shotgun. Hawkins and Ward in the backfield with him. Four-man rush, dumps it over the middle and nearly intercepted by Chris Campbell after it went off the hands of Wayne Ward. Little too hot that time to handle. Dave Myers throwing it with a lot of speed on the football. His running back couldn't hang on. Ward, not a lot of action this year other than special teams. Hasn't played a ton from scrimmage. Second and 10 for the Hokies with 11.50 left to go here in the Orange Bowl. And we're told that if Canes fans throw another orange on the field, it's going to result in a 15-yard penalty. Meyer out of the shotgun, setting up a screen. Complete at the 20. Ward cuts it down to the 28-yard line, and picks up eight as Dan Morgan made the tackle. It will be third and a little bit over a yard. Dan Morgan chasing that screenplay down from the middle linebacker spot. Did a nice job using his speed to the outside. This defense has been very aggressive today, and they're led by that middle linebacker. Third and a yard as they mark it at the 29-yard line. Ward and Hawkins in the eye. That's Ward. And he'll get the first down on second effort after Campbell had hit him in the backfield. 
And then Howard Clark made the tackle along with Edward Reed. It's a first down at the Tech 31. It looked like Miami's defensive line had, had won the battle at the line of scrimmage, but only second effort by Ward. Finally pushing the pile forward. Campbell was in on the tackle as well. Ball gets pushed to the 31 yard line, but this Miami yeah, defense baby. right now willing to trade a couple yards with that clock to keep ticking down. It's at 10.57 and counting. Well, you'd like to get this offense off the field and really solidify things. Slot formation to the top of the screen. Meyer out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. Meyer steps up and throws. Deflected away by Philip Buchanan, who nearly had his first interception of the season. Emmett Johnson was the intended target. Meyer's that time trying to go to Johnson down the middle, but a nice break on the football by Philip Buchanan. That's six breakups on the season. Watch Buchanan on the left side of your screen. It was a good throw, but a, a great break on the football. Well covered. Four jerseys down on the left side, right on the U at the 50-yard line. Four jerseys. A tough place to throw the football. Tried to fit it in to Emma Johnson, but Phil Buchanan right there on the spot for and the looking, looking right into the sun where both the receiver and the defensive back. Second and 10 from the 31. Meyer under center. Play action. Meyer with time. He throws, and that is nearly intercepted, but Emma Johnson got it, and he might take it all away. Emma Johnson will score for the Hokies. Edward Reed went for the pick, and he didn't get it. And that's the last thing Miami wanted is the quick strike. That's exactly right. To play. That's exactly right, Frank. You don't mind him going down and milking the clock two and three yards here and there, but you don't want to give up the big play. And you would think Edward Reed, he wouldn't have gambled if he didn't think he would get, get the interception. That time it looked like he picked it off, but it ends up in Emmett Johnson's hands, and the Hokies are on the board with 13 points. A 69-yard touchdown pass from Meyer to Johnson in the Orange Bowl crowd settles down all of a sudden. Carter Worley's extra point is up and good, and with 10.27 still to play, it's back down to a 21-point lead. Well, you don't want to get sloppy here in the fourth quarter, and you don't want to let Virginia Tech have the uh, ability or the confidence to get back in this game. Miami's still up by 21 as Dave Meyer connects with Emma Johnson. Edward Reed gambles and loses. The Canes, though, still lead 35-14. to 14. Par, par, birdie, par, eagle, whoa, par, par, hmm, must be a Golf Magazine subscriber. How would you like to shave three, four, or five strokes off your game? Add 20 yards to your tee shots, start one putting greens, chip like a pro, blast your way out of the bunker, shoot lower scores, and play the best golf of your life. Now you can by calling for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. Issue after issue, Golf Magazine gives you proven tips to improve your short game. Develop better touch, fix your slice, straighten your hook, drop more putts, drive longer and more, all to have you saying, par, par, birdie. When you call now for your free trial issue, you get the Golf Magazine gear bag with a roomy shoe compartment as your free gift. Call now for your free trial issue of Golf Magazine. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all for just $15.94. Plus, get the Golf Magazine gear bag free with your paid subscription. Call the toll-free number on your screen now. I need teamwork out there. You gotta stay strong. Every tackle's gotta count. You gotta play it hard. Let's bring paralysis to its knees and millions to their feet. Let's put the crunch on paralysis. Hi, Panther fans. I'm Jeff Rimmer. I'm Bridget Whitney. And I'm Christy Berry. We're here to face off for families. Fox Sports Net and the Panthers need you to help us provide meals to hundreds of South Florida families this Thanksgiving. Just bring non-perishable food items like these to the Panthers game on the 10th of November. With your donation, you could win an autographed Panthers jersey. All food collected goes to benefit families in the local area. We'll see you November 10th. Face off for families, a partnership between the Florida Panthers, Fox Sports Net, and you. 1027 left to go and let's take another look from the end zone and you'll see how close Edward Reed came to picking this pass off. Well left side of your screen that's where Myers wants to throw the football just lays it in there but Edward Reed it went right underneath his, his left elbow looked like the ball 
he didn't put his hands out to catch the football. It looked like it went right underneath. He made a basket for it almost and didn't come up with the ball. And great concentration. You have to give Emmett Johnson credit to catch the football in traffic and then take it down the sidelines for a touchdown. But taking another look, Edward Reed, at worst, should have broken up the play. At worst, he had a kill shot on Johnson if he goes for the receiver. He was right in going for the ball because he could have made the play, and somehow the ball just slipped through. Sometimes you just got to catch the football with your hands when you try to cradle it with your body. Bad things happen. Worley's kick. kickoff. Andre Johnson at the 7. And he'll go down at the 22-yard line, number 48, Mike Donahue, on the special teams tackle for Virginia Tech. Oh, now Miami's got to take some time off the clock, shorten up the ball game. Virginia Tech's last two drives, John, 130 yards total and two touchdowns. Their prior nine drives total 204 yards, resulting in seven punts, a fumble, and an interception. And I think the biggest thing, Frank, is the quick strike ability last couple of drives of Virginia Tech. They haven't taken a lot of time off the clock. Now, if you're Miami, you want to make them go 12, 13 plays if they're going to score. So it's first and 10, Miami, with 10, 18 left to go. Dorsey. Complete to Shockey, who had to double clutch it and made the catch. Corey Bird driving him back, but they'll mark it up at the 28-yard line. Pickup of about six on first down. Shockey's numbers, three catches, 60 yards, and that big touchdown in the first half. Which put Miami up 21-0 at halftime. He just looks like a tight end. When he comes out of the huddle, he just looks like a, a typical hard-nosed, blocking, catching tight end. He can do it all for the Hurricanes. 6'6", 245 pounds. Second down and a long three for Miami. With the Jackson. Jackson dragged down at the line of scrimmage. No gain. And it'll bring up third and about three for the Canes. Ben Taylor in on the tackle, number 40. Well, an important play here for Miami coming up on the nine-minute mark. Yeah, make no mistake about it. They need to get a first down here on this series. As you said, Frank, nine minutes and counting to the end of this football game. Miami would love to keep their offense on this football field and continue to run the ball. That may sound strange here, the 21-point lead that we're sounding nervous, but even without Michael Vick, this is not your average football team in Virginia Tech. On third down, Dorsey flings it incomplete, going for D.J. Williams, and that hasn't worked at all to Williams today. Corey Bird there on the coverage, and it'll be punt time for Miami. Yeah, Ken Dorsey not happy walking to the Miami sidelines, going three and out. He knows how important that series was to move the chains. That's something that a quarterback, you, you got to feel, you got to be able to move the ball in that situation, and sometimes it's out of your control, but it still doesn't wipe away the disappointment you, you hold in yourself in the sideline. Freddie Capshaw in the punt. Ronnie Whitaker back at the Tech 30. Capshaw gets it away. High boot Big kick. Punt. Whitaker catches it with his back to the Canes at the 18. And Whitaker still on his feet. And finally, he'll go down at the 24-25 yard line as the coverage team closed in. D.J. Williams there along with Aaron Mosier for the Canes. And it'll be first and 10 Hokies at their 24. A 57-yard punt by Freddie Capshaw. He has been outstanding today. Freddie riding the wind that time a little bit. Did an excellent job of getting it way up in the air. Whitaker was spit out of that pile. Looked scary for a minute, but special teams for the Hurricanes today have been spectacular. First and 10 Hokies, ball just past their 24-yard line. Eight minutes and 33 seconds to go. John, do you come after Meyer, or do you sit back in his zone and, and just kind of let him throw it underneath? I don't think you come after Meyer in this situation, no. I would sit back and, and make him go 80 yards or, or 75 yards and, and eat up some clock here. Four-man rush. Meyer over the middle, through the hands of Suggs, and nearly picked off again by Chris Campbell. Second time today that Campbell's nearly come up with the pick on the deflection. There's been a couple tips today, and you see Suggs going, hey, get the ball down a little bit, Dave. That ball's high, and it, I couldn't get up to it. I'm only six foot tall. Almost a big play for the Hurricanes. Deep in their own end. You see a little pressure coming there. Just a flick out to the underneath route by Suggs, but just a, the tip of the deflection. Number 48, Chris Campbell cannot come up with it. That's a couple plays today. The Hurricane defense on the tip drill. If they come up with, it's big-time turnover. Second and 10 for the Hokies. Give the Suggs. 
cuts inside and has his legs chopped out from under him on a beautiful tackle by Al Blades. It's a gain of five. It'll be third and five for the Hokies. The aggressive free safety, Al Blades coming up, to, as you said, Frank, taking the legs of number 22, Lee Suggs. On second down, to bring up a third and about five, a long five to go for the Hokies. But on that play, number seven was a blur, top of your screen, just torpedoing down right there. You see him, good tackle by number seven, the senior Al Blades. Third and six for the Hokies from their 29. Four-man rush, pocket collapsing, over the middle, incomplete, intercepted. Edward Reed's got his second of the day. And he's got some room. And he's got some room. There goes Reed, and he'll take it to the house. The seventh defensive touchdown by the Hurricanes this year. Well, Thank a couple of plays we talked about, John, where the ball was up for grabs, and Miami couldn't come up with it that time. Edward Reed makes up for the pick he lost on the last series. Make no mistake about it. That time, Edward Reed, the right man in the right spot. The tip drill works. Edward Reed goes in untouched for the defensive score. They put 63 points up on the board. This defense and special team so far make it 70 now. And a penalty flag. And I guess this is the orange penalty. Or Reed might have pulled his helmet off in the end zone. There is one orange on the field. So it'll be a 35-yard extra point try upcoming for Todd Seavers. And I know Butch, Dav Butch Davis isn't happy about it, but when you take a look at the scoreboard with 7.35 left to go in the game and see 41 points underneath that Miami title, you've got to be happy with that. Good look at Edward Reed, the junior out of St. Rose, Louisiana. Interception number six this season and his second for a touchdown. So Seavers will now try a 35-yard extra point after the unsportsmanlike penalty call. Aaron Mosier is the holder. Kick is away, and it is no good, wide left. That's the second time this year Todd Seavers has missed from 35 yards on an extra point after a celebration penalty, and you see he's not happy with himself. But with 7.35 left to go, the Hurricanes still lead it 41 to 14. We'll take a break. Edward Reed with the deflection off the uh, pass through the hands of the Tech receiver. And Ed Reed comes up with a hurricane touchdown. It's 41-14 Miami back at the Orange Bowl right after this on Fox Sports Net. Rugged, tough, the Rhino is built to take grueling off-road abuse. And so can Rhino Lining's Tough Stuff truck bed liners. If you work your truck hard, then you need a Rhino Lining sprayed-on polyurethane lining to protect your truck bed. Rhino Linings is the world's leading sprayed-on liner company. Their Tough Stuff liner sprayed on up to a quarter inch thick is virtually indestructible polyurethane. And unlike plastic liners, which don't stop truck bed rust, a Rhino Lining protects your investment permanently. A Rhino Lining only takes a few hours to apply and it's warranted by your dealer for as long as you own your truck. So if you want to protect your truck's value, get a Rhino Liner. Call or log on right now. We'll send you a free brochure, a sample of Tough Stuff, and give you the name of the Rhino Linings dealer nearest you. Call now. Hockey Leagues. Parties. Figure skating. Home of the Panthers. Training Center. Pro Shop. Breakaway Bar and Grill. Scores and highlights are only half the story. Oh my goodness! Now, the nightly show that delivers more coverage. More analysis. This team has unity. More opinions. This one's just too good to be true. Plus, live interaction where you get to sound off. How did this show get out of control? Our team covers the sports scene like you've never seen. What a hit. The National Sports Report at 10 and midnight on Fox Sports Net. Miss it, miss out. 41-14, Kane's leader with 7.35 to go, and we have our first orange penalty 
A fan threw an orange on the field, and the referee, Dennis Hennigan, threw the flag. Let's take another look at the interception. Thrown behind Derek Carter, the tight end. Reed made the pickoff and then picked up his blockers. Yeah, it was just a great play that time. Edward Reed redeeming himself on the play the series before. Goes for the pick, doesn't get it. This time, the tip drill works to perfection. You can see the smile on his face. The only problem is he may have gotten hit with the 15-yarder for getting his helmet on. That's what it was. Taking his helmet off in the end zone. You know what? Uh, you know how do you, that, yeah. how do you hold play? Uh, you know that's a penalty on Ed Reed. We know that. That's the rule. But I don't understand holding players and teams responsible for, fans. for the behavior of one fan out of 77,000 who throws an orange. I mean, come on. That's for, you know get a life, refs. Kickoff coming down to Suggs at the 13. And tripped up at the 31-yard line. That is Jermel Weaver, number 57, making the tackle for Miami. And Aaron Mosier, excuse me, Aaron Mosier was there, number 26. I'll tell you what, Aaron Mosier is one ripped young man. Let's take another look. Yeah, he went into the locker room to get some fluids back in his body. That time made a... A nice tackle on Suggs, who's hard to bring down. We've seen that all afternoon. Mosier doing a nice job on special teams. Aaron, of course, the three-time Big East decathlon champion. He is some special all-around athlete. First and 10 from the Tech 34. Meyer gains with the four-man rush. Flings it out complete to Ward. Sidesteps Campbell and gets around Rump as well. And Ward into Miami territory at the 49-yard line. Edward Reed made the tackle for the games. Beautiful catch and run after catch by Ward, number 32. Haven't seen much of him this afternoon, but he's done a nice job when he's had his hands on the football. 17 yards on the play. If you're Miami's defense, Frank, you'd love to hold the Virginia Tech Hokies to 14 points. You'd love to come out right now, get another turnover, at least slow them down here. Keep them off the scoreboard with seven minutes left to go in this game. Don't believe the Hurricanes have officially been credited with a sack today. There was one that occurred, but it was after a delay of game, so the play didn't count. From the Miami 49, bit of a low snap. Meyer over the middle, complete to win his tight end at the Miami 33. Al Blades making the tackle there, but it's another first down. And another flag on the far side of the field at the 40-yard line. And we'll see what the call is. Appears to be against Miami. It looks like the Hurricanes walking backwards. Face mask on the Canes. The gain was 16 on the completion to win. And they'll tack on some yardage. This occurred away from the football. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to pick it up on the, uh, on the replay at all. Down the middle of the field, it looks like Virginia Tech has had some success between Campbell and Vilma that time. Blades in on the tackle. Wasn't on the tackle. It was away from the football. That's a first down at the 32-yard line of Miami. Six minutes, 49 seconds to go. Tech has all their points, all 14 of them, the two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. On first and 10, Meyer. Quarterback draw, and he's got room. Meyer to the 20. Mike Rump makes the tackle there as Meyer went backwards. They'll give him forward progress to about the 22 and very close to a first down. That was set up well. Yeah, nice play. Really, the middle of the football field's been the only problem with the Miami defense today. Myers had some success in the second half throwing down the middle. This time, they set up the uh, quarterback draw to perfection. He takes a couple steps back out of the shotgun and a lot of room to run. Miami very lucky this wasn't Michael Vick with the football because he would have made a little bit more out of that play. A measure for the first down. And it appears to be just shy by about an inch. So it was 6.31 to go. It'll be second and uh, inches for Virginia Tech. Ball at the Miami 22-yard line. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Fox Sportsnet. Miami been in control of this game pretty much from the outset. They led it 14-0 after one, 21-0 after two periods of play. And going to the fourth quarter, it was 28 to nothing. Teams have exchanged touchdowns, two apiece here in the fourth quarter. 
Miami has been credited with one sack, we are told, in the game. Michael Vick on the sideline, towel over his head, and he has not played since the second quarter. Second, Got it. Second and a yard for the Hokies. They'll work out of the shotgun. Meyer. Fake screen one way, sets up the screen to Hawkins the other way. Inside the 20, and he'll go down there. He has enough for a first down. Mike Rump in on the tackle for Miami. Gain of five and a first down at about the Miami 17-yard line. Nice play call that time. Hawkins was the man on the reception on the screen play for the Virginia Tech offense. Little pump fake by Dave Meyer one way. Hawkins going the other. As you said, Frank, they do move the chains almost down to inside the 20-yard line. The ball at the six at the 17-yard line of the Hurricanes. Six minutes, 11 seconds left to go. Higher under center. Gives it to Suggs. Suggs taken down after a gain of about two. Damian Lewis there to fill the hole for Miami. Damian Lewis played pretty well today. Of course, he had been struggling with a uh, broken bone in his foot. Missed two ball games in the middle of the season, sandwiched around that Florida State game. Missed the Rutgers game, missed the Temple game. Came back last week against Louisiana Tech. He has played well in the big games as well. Damian Lewis has been injured often this season, but this game today he's played his played his heart out, done a nice job trying to control that defensive line. Second and eight. Fire. Down the middle, incomplete, going for his tight end Browning win at the goal line. Edward Reed there on the coverage for Miami. That'll bring up third and nine for Virginia Tech as they mark the ball just at the 16-yard line, about a length of a football inside the 16. So call it a short nine, a long eight, whatever you prefer. <laughs> and you know this Miami defense would love to keep Virginia Tech off the scoreboard. You see there, very, very tough day for Frank Beamer. Third and long for the Hokies. Meyer out of the shotgun. Looking for a quarterback draw again. Slides down at about the 12-yard line. It'll be about four or five yards shy of a first down. Picked up three. It'll be fourth down, and Virginia Tech has no choice but to go for it. We're down to the five-minute mark. Five minutes right now left in this football game at the Orange Bowl. Let's see if Miami can turn it over on downs. Whitten and Johnson in a slot right. Meyer out of the shotgun. Meyer swings it in the flat, and Chris Campbell there to break it up. Intended for Jared Ferguson, the fullback, and Chris Campbell was there to make the play. Chris Campbell was there on the low side, and so was Edward Reed. He was on the high side. They do a great job of covering the short side of the field. Nowhere to throw the football for Dave Myers. And the Hurricanes turn it over on downs. A look at Chris Myers, the junior out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. He's had an outstanding year for the Hurricanes. Five tackles for a loss coming into today. Four sacks, an interception. Three other passes broken up. And he's had his hands on a couple today off deflections. We see the tired defense walking off the field and the excited wide receiver on the sidelines, Daryl Jones. Let's go. Oh, let's, let's close this thing out with four minutes and 36 seconds left to go. From the Miami 12, Robert Williams in motion. They'll give it to Jackson. Jackson trying to go to the outside. Finds some room with the 15, 20, and goes down at the 21-yard line. He'll be about a half a yard shy of a first down. The other thing is you want to try and stay in bounds if you can. Yeah, you do, and Jackson trying to do all he can to get the first down. No, there's no running room to the inside. Good block by Najee Divencourt, but Jackson using his speed. Now he just tries to dive to maybe stay in bounds, but try to get as many yards as he possibly can to get that first down. He came up about a half a yard short of, of the sticks. 22 carries, 137 yards for James Jackson. A very workmanlike effort against Virginia Tech. Of course, a couple of years ago up in Blacksburg, three years ago, he had a big night. Long runs. Second and a yard for the Canes. Jackson will have the first down out to the 25-yard line, and the Canes will move the sticks and have a fresh set of downs with four minutes and 25 seconds left to go. Dan Wilkinson, number 54, credited with the last tackle. It's pretty simple from here on out, John. Just hang on to the football, Keep run it, it yeah. 
Keep the clock moving. Keep that clock moving. It's your best friend right now. Keep it on the ground with the dominant running performance of James Jackson today. First and 10 came. Davenport and Jackson behind Dorsey. Get to Jackson. Jackson run down by Housewright after a gain of two. Jake Housewright, the middle linebacker from Gate City, Virginia. 6'2", 237-pound junior. And that was a nice play by Housewright because if he doesn't make the play on Jackson, it looks like he gets to the corner again and is close to a first down. Good play by the middle linebacker, the junior. Clock continues to move. Three minutes, 32 seconds left to go here in the Orange Bowl. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Fox Sportsnet. And, I, you know, John, I guess you can debate back and forth. If the score stands, it is the margin of victory, that is. We can debate back and forth. Well, how much difference would Michael Vick have made? It's really hard to put a, you know, a tangible number on that. It really is, and I don't think the computer can. Tech on a blitz, and they get Dorsey back at the 20-yard line. Ben Taylor before Dorsey could even hand the ball off. The Miami had 200 yards rushing before that play. That one, a loss back to the 21-yard line, a loss of six. Well, that's just the case of Ben Taylor timing up the snap count. He's heard it probably on the last three or four plays because Ken Dorsey not thinking about that, just thinking about going on the same cadence and Ben Taylor coming in and really doing a nice job, almost causing the turnover. And Dorsey's coming out of the ball game. Ethnic Sands looking to come in, but the play clock is down to 10. Miami's going to have to take a timeout. Probably let this thing run down and maybe call the timeout right before it expires. Four, three on the play clock, and the timeout is taken by Miami. So I don't know if there was an injury there or Butch just got a little scared off by that last blitz and doesn't want to get Dorsey hurt in a 41-14 game. Ken's definitely on the sidelines, maybe on one knee. So there's definitely a problem physically with Ken Dorsey. Well, not really sure what the problem is at this point. But that would be tragic for Miami to lose Dorsey at this point. Let's take another look, see if we can see if he falls on the football or what happens. He definitely holds on to the ball here. Gives it to James Jackson and just really a collision deep in the Miami backfield. And it looked like he might have got a helmet underneath the face mask right on the chin. Yeah, you can't tell. So he tell. might be a little woozy right now. He's walking back over to the, to the uh, coaches on the sidelines. See if he can go back in. I think he has to sit out at least a play. Is that right, Frank? I believe so. There's Ken's numbers today. The completion percentage, not his best, but boy, look at that yardage. 283 yards on 11 completions. That's what I call I'll take that. good mileage. <laughs> I'll take that on 11 completions, 283 and three touchdowns. Kenny coming back into the game. I guess he uh, they took the timeout, so it doesn't so count doesn't as have a play. To sit out right. the play. It'll be third and 14 for the Hurricanes. Ken Dorsey, the sophomore out of Orinda, California. As I said, not great percentage-wise today, but boy, you talk about big plays. A 42-yarder to Moss, an 80-yarder 80 80 to Moss. strike, yeah, that was, that was terrific. Another 41-yard completion to Reggie Wayne. Well, if your car got that kind of mileage, you'd almost <laughs> never have to buy gas. You got that right. A 44-yarder to Shockey for a touchdown. On third and 14, I'm sure Miami will play it conservative. And they give it to Davenport. Najee will pick up two or three, and he's pushed back by the Tech defense. Corey Bird, the rover, was there, along with 95, Jim Davis. And Lamar Cobb, number 28, defensive end, have not called his name much today. So the clock still moves. We are approaching two minutes, and Miami will have to kick it away. It's a fourth down, and now the punt team comes onto the field. Under two minutes from the Orange Bowl. An impressive day for the Miami Hurricanes. A couple of hiccups defensively in the fourth quarter. But other than that, uh, they have been in total control of this football game. And Capshaw loses the snap. Picked up by Virginia Tech, and they have it inside the five-yard line. Corey Bird picked it up. It wasn't a bad snap. It went right through Freddie Capshaw's hands. Well, Capshaw's done an excellent job all afternoon, and that time the ball goes right through his hands. You can't say it's a lack of concentration, but it, it might be. You know, you got to catch that football and get into the game, and Butch asking him what happened. You know, you want to desperately keep Virginia Tech off the scoreboard. Just we were talking about margin of victory, Frank, and if Vic would have made a difference, but margin of victory does make a difference when you add it up in the computer. Man, there's BCS polls. That's uh, It does count in at least some of the computer polls. 
So Virginia Tech with their first break today, their first turnover. And Miami takes a timeout. And Miami will come up. They can get their goal line defense situated. That's the kind of mistake that, you know, fortunately it comes in a 41-14 game, and Miami may give up another score because of it, but that's the kind of mistake that over the past five years has killed Miami against Virginia Tech. Yeah, and you get the ball, Virginia Tech gets the ball on a three-yard line. You see the defensive staff very upset because, you know, 21 points, 41-21 is a lot different than 41-14. Yeah, it sounds a lot more impressive, and let's face it, in college football, it is to a certain degree a beauty contest. You know, if you rack up big wins, look at the computers and how they rank Florida State two spots ahead of Miami. They're because, averaging over 50 points a game. Right. Florida State's had only one loss and one close game. Everything else has been a blowout. Well, in any case, it is Virginia Tech ball at the Miami three-yard line. By the way, Virginia Tech's record of 14 consecutive Big East victories will come to an end today. And Miami set to snap another long winning streak by an opponent here in the Orange Bowl. On first and goal, pitch to Suggs. Looking to get outside, and he'll walk in for a touchdown from three yards out. Well, Lee Suggs, one of the few times Tech has tried to go wide on Miami today, and they score the three-yard touchdown. And that ties the Big East record for touchdowns of the season with 19 for Lee Suggs. Yeah, he's found the end zone 19 times this season, and he's a deserving young man, runs the football hard. When he has open field, he can pick him up and put him down. Worley on to attempt the extra point with a minute and 36 to play. Bit of a low snap, Worley gets it up, and it is good. And with a minute and 36 to go, Lee Suggs has cut the margin down to 20. It's Miami 41. Virginia Tech 21 will be back with the conclusion of this game at the Orange Bowl right after this on Fox Sports Net. Like a lot of people, we have some credit card debt. We always made our payments, but then the transmission went. Another 1200 bucks on my credit card. We didn't have a choice. I had to get to work. Our rent went up, and then Debbie needed braces. We started getting calls from people looking for their money. It wasn't just our credit rating that we were worried about. It was our whole life. We got the help we needed from Cambridge Credit Counseling. They understood that we didn't want another loan. We wanted to get out of debt. Cambridge Credit Counseling is a nonprofit service that work with you and your creditors to reduce your monthly payments. It's a fresh start. Now we don't have to cringe. Hello? Every time the phone rings. We have one simple monthly payment that we can handle. And since we're paying promptly, we get money back from Cambridge every six months. We can breathe again. We feel good about ourselves. Give Cambridge Credit Counseling a call. Find out how good it feels to be debt-free. The undefeated season, five Super Bowls, and more wins than any team since 1970. 35 years of Dolphins glory bears one truth. Whoever steps in, steps up. Now, the Dave Wanstead era begins. Witness the making of a new chapter in Dolphins history during the most exciting home schedule in years. 2000 Dolphins. The tradition continues. Call 305-573-TEAM for individual game tickets now. Hi, I'm Keith Leibowitz inviting you to join us next for the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report Board Edition. And I'm Ben Smith. It's a full 30 minutes of sports news surrounding your hometown team. The Orlando Magic looking for magic with their stars still ailing. And the latest BCS poll is out. The Florida teams are seen orange. So for 30 minutes of nightly sports news, 100% dedicated to Florida home teams. Join us next for the 11 p.m. Florida Regional Sports Report only on Fox Sports Net. So right now, as far as Virginia Tech is concerned, it is window dressing. Their winning streak, 8-0 this year, comes to an end. Their 19-game winning streak in regular season games will come to an end. The only loss they've had over the last two years has been that uh, game in the Sugar Bowl against FSU for the national championship, and their 14-game Big East winning streak will come to an end today. A lot of things coming to the end, especially uh, for Virginia Tech today. Their national title hopes probably coming to a crashing halt today. Miami. Miami's crowd a little bit subdued because of the three third, uh, fourth quarter touchdowns by Virginia Tech. Miami led this game 28-0 going to the fourth. And Tech with a couple of offensive touchdowns and then the uh, special teams mistake by Freddie Capshaw who had an outstanding day kicking the football, letting a snap go through his hands. 
and then setting up Virginia Tech on the three-yard line for their third offensive touchdown of the day. But that one really has to be laid on Freddie Capshaw's shoulders. And, but as I said, Freddie had had an outstanding day prior to that. Just some excellent net on his uh, punting. And now Virginia Tech will set up for the onside kick. Miami with the hands team on the return. Instead, they'll try and pooch it down the other side, and that will go out of bounds. Daryl Jones was alert and aware of it. He ran that ball and ushered it out of bounds. The flag flies because of the illegal procedure on the kickoff out of bounds, and Miami will take over. I believe they have the option of taking it at that point at the 37-yard line. You see Coach Beamer saying, hey, did you let the wind get that, or we want to kick that maybe a little bit more inbounds? So Miami will have it and a chance to run the clock out. Virginia Tech does have all three of their timeouts remaining, and we'll see whether they choose to lose them, to use them, excuse me. See, now, I, I disagree with this rule. The ball went out at the 37-yard line. They put it at the 35. I think you should have the option of taking it where it went out of bounds, if you so desire. I agree with you. Why penalize Miami because Virginia Tech made a mistake? Or any team for that matter. On first down, Jackson picks his way through for a yard or so. Ben Taylor there to make the tackle along with Phillip Summers. In this situation, you'd love to see James Jackson just kind of gash him right here with about 10, 10, 10 guys on the line of scrimmage, find a crease and just go to the house. Well, it appears Frank Beamer will not prolong the agony for the Hokies. They have chosen not to use their timeouts, and we have a minute and 10 left to go. 41-21 Hurricanes. And really, John, it wasn't that close. No, it wasn't. And, and you keep looking at the scoreboard and try to remind yourself that you're really surprised when you do see 41-21 because it wasn't close at all. Jackson again. Again stacked up after a yard or two. And Ben Taylor, who's really had an outstanding game for Tech's defense, making the tackle. Miami will have to snap it one more time. James Jackson unofficially 26 yards, 26 carries, excuse me, for 145 yards. And Miami will snap it one more time, and they'll walk out of here with the victory. Move to 7-1 and one on the season and be in control of their destiny, apparently. Canes will snap it one more time. We're down to 21 on the clock, 13 on the play clock. One more time to James Jackson. Cuts up inside and gets up to the 43-yard line. Shy of the first down, but it doesn't matter. Two, one, and the Hurricanes have done it. In the same season, they have beaten number one, Florida State, and number two, Virginia Tech. The final today, 41-21. to The Canes did a great job on both sides of the ball. Special teams, they did an excellent job kicking it, covering the kicks. I thought uh, Santana Moss just had a huge game. Big play, touchdowns, I mean, James Jackson ran it for over 100 yards. Great team effort by the Hurricanes. We'll take one more break. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl to wrap it up, but the Canes walk off the field. 20-point winners over the Hokies. The final 41 to 21. We'll be right back at the Orange Bowl after this. Miami Hurricanes football on Fox Sportsnet has been brought to you in part by Nextel. Nextel, how business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. By Office Depot, taking care of business. And by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida. The best plan is the one you don't have to think about. Well, it's a happy day for the Miami Hurricanes offensive guard, Martin Bibla, who's he and the offensive line did an outstanding job today, John. Ken Dorsey was not sacked today for the second time in a big game this year. No sacks against Florida State, no sacks against the Hokies. A 20-point margin of victory, it could have been more. I wonder if that might hurt Miami a little bit in some of the computer rankings. You would hope not because it was an impressive win, even though Michael Vick only played about four possessions. Yeah, I thought you touched on it. The offensive line did a terrific job. They provided great protection for Ken Dorsey. They provided a lot of running room for James Jackson. He goes over 100 yards. And Santana Moss, what can you say? He did a terrific job, an 80-yard touchdown pass, a 42-yarder to open up the scoring. The defense was spectacular. The Canes deserved the ride up the poles. 
James Jackson, 27 carries, 151 of Miami's 183 rushing yards. You see Ken Dorsey's numbers. Virginia Tech piled up some good numbers offensively, but really didn't get anything done until the fourth quarter. The three turnovers, including an uh, interception return for a touchdown by Edward Reed, who had two picks today, running his season total to six. All in all, a very impressive win for the Hurricanes, with or without Michael Vick for Virginia Tech, because this is not a one-man team. They have a good defense, great special teams. Lee Suggs, an outstanding running back, so an impressive win for the Hurricanes. Yeah, I thought Lee Suggs did an excellent job running the football for Virginia Tech. He, tough runner, 19 touchdowns, a, a Big East record. Uh, they have a great team, but Miami was the better team today. So thanks for joining us here at the Orange Bowl. Catch more University of Miami action next week, Sunday, November 12th at 8 p.m., when they battled the Dan Marino alma mater and the John Kajemi alma mater, the University of Pittsburgh. The NHL has emerged here on Fox Sports Net. Tune in all season long for exclusive Florida Panthers action. Wednesday night, it's the Panthers at home when they host the Montreal Canadiens at 7 o'clock. Up next is the National Sports Report, followed by your 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report. From my broadcast partner, John Kajemi, future member of the PGA Senior Tour, I'm Frank Ford saying goodbye. Once again, the final score from the Orange Bowl, Canes 41, Virginia Tech 21. So long, everyone. Great.